Good evening, folks. Welcome back to another Monday night. I was going to see how we hang out. I'm getting confused with all these live streams. Another Monday night live. I hope everybody is well. Hope you all had a fantastic weekend. Hope it wasn't too stressful. Hope the weather wasn't too unkind to you. There's been some pretty bad weather, certainly from a UK perspective. Uh, and, and, and randomly, because in my in my phone, when it comes to the weather app, I've still got Chicago or Schomburg saved in there when I was going to go to uh, to a Depticon uh, last year. It's pretty cold in Chicago as well, so anybody over in Chicago, yeah, it's there. It's damn cold there too. So I hope everybody is good. I, I hope you're all well. Let's have a quick look in the chat and see how we've got. I've just noticed the last comment there from uh, Talison. Hello to you. He said, hello, all this makes it... Oh, sorry. We hope you baited us with this $300. Right, I'll, co I'll come to that pretty quickly because I appreciate there's obviously a lot of you have come for that, right? I will start by saying... This is a rumor. This is not a confirmed price. There is no confirmed price for Cursed City yet. But there is a rumor doing the rounds. There's a number of people who've made videos about it. There's a, there's a rumor doing the rounds. $300 is being mentioned. I've done loads of research. I've got loads of stuff to talk about. The, top, the, the, the topic for tonight, or, or the main kind of comment, is why the price is irrelevant, or, or why I think it's irrelevant. And that's what we're going to focus on. Um, but yeah, I don't want people kind of like sort of panicking here saying it's definitely 300. We do not know for certain, but there is a rumor doing the rounds that it, that it could be 300. It could be complete bollocks, <laughs> but we'll talk about that tonight. And I think it's a, it's a good point to kind of to launch into other discussions, but we'll, we'll come back to that. Let's see who we've got in the chat to start with. Um, we've got, uh, we had Dirk in nice and early. Um... We had Mark Lynn in as well. Hello, Mark Lynn. Uh, D uh, Marcus, the Super Pumpkin Man. Mark Wright, Lot Maiden. Justin was in as well. Peter Kuman, ASDF. Ortega, seeing he's coming back for the rerun. Hello, Ortega in the rerun. Um, we've got different gear TV. Hello, mate. Uh, so we've got Busey there. We've got Palmsy as well. Six in the head. Hello to you. We've got Al Cluley. We've got Josh in as well. Nice to see you, Josh, mate. How are you doing? Hope you're well. Uh, we've got Steve Evans, we've got Blizzards, we've got Christian doing the the, uh, the wrangling tonight. <laughs> this is not going to be a negative stream. This is not going to be one of those kind of like oh, evil GW just price gouging. It's not going to be one of those streams. We're going to have a we're going to have a conversation. We're going to have a debate. We're going to have a discussion about it, um, and and about some other stuff. Really, it's almost less to do with the price. The price is what's generated the discussion or the potential price, but it's less to do with the price itself. We'll come on to that. And uh, we've got Warwick Dark Edge as well. Good evening to you, mate. We've got um going down the chat there, some chat back and forwards. Lord Technopants, nice to see you in the live stream, fella. Hope you're well. You see, they glued together his canine shadow stalkers. They were not much fun too fiddly. They are a bit fiddly, mate. I actually quite enjoy building the fiddly ones because I do not enjoy building models at all. It's the least enjoyable part of the hobby for me. But at least if there's a bit of a challenge in it. It feels like a bit of a puzzle, to be fair. And those canine shadow stalkers definitely felt like that. Um, when I just feel like I'm kind of like clipping and gluing, I get no enjoyment from that. Um, Scott Latham, hello to you, mate. We've also got Charles Syndrome, hello to you as well. We've got Ed Handley's in as well. Barry Kleiber says he's got a three o'clock meeting he'll try and catch later. Hello, Barry, if you come back and see this. We've got Arnold Agans in as well. Hello, Arnold. We've got Ruas in. Good evening to you, mate. Jim Zom says hope everyone's doing well. Um, John Kellogg's in as well. Hello to you, John. Peter Nicholas. <laughs> Damn it. That's 300 nights work for me, he says. <laughs> it's, about, it's about 700 nights work for me, mate. That's the thing. Um... Um, Tasty Brain Drain is in as well. Nice to see you, mate. Hello, Mark Coxie as well. Hello to you, Arnold. Thank you very much for the donation as well. There, I just saw that out of the corner of my eye. Um, we've got Michael Cowan in as well. McGreg Cherry said he's got post Super Bowl hangover. I'm flagging today, mate. I stayed up to watch the Super Bowl last night and then was up early this morning with the little one. So I, I am flagging, I'll be honest, and uh, <laughs> we'll see how I go tonight. But I'm, I'm running on coffee fumes and uh, adrenaline at the moment. Uh, Gareth Lewis, hello to you, fella. Simon Tuckley's in as well. He says, hope you're keeping well. Looking forward to this one. Me too, mate. I thought we'd have a lively one tonight because it'll keep me awake. Uh, Tony Howell's in as well. Nice to see you. Talison, we just mentioned. Uh, and, I, and I hope you don't think I've baited you in with that title. It is, if you look on YouTube, there are other channels that have been kind of talking about this for at least the last three or four days. This is not like me kind of just putting a number out of thin air just to kind of bait people in. I want to discuss... Like the potential, if it's true, if the rumor is true, and I'll be honest, at this stage, 
I personally don't believe it. But if the rumour is true, then we'll kind of like, that's where I want to kind of delve into. Um, Stu McMurphy's in as well, saying this makes it a great start to the week. Nice one. Mountain Gremlin Games, nice to see you in as well. Frantic's in, Andy Smith's in, Yoakum's in as well, saying he's got a big bag from Fell there to store most of his Warcry stuff. So time to paint more war criteria. Now you've got somewhere to put all your stuff, mate. Andrew Fairbanks as well is in. He says, hope we have a great show tonight, considering how terrible your opinion tonight may be. <laughs> how terrible my opinion. No opinions are terrible. They're just different. They might not match yours. That's the difference. Um, Krabby's in as well. Hello to you, fella. Um, oh, I just jumped off the top of my screen there as I went to scroll down. We've got Lord, uh, Lord Main, Peter Stockdale. Uh, Warwick Dark, it says 300 GBP, I assume. No, mate, 300 dollars is the uh, is the rumor, uh, and I'll come on to what that converts into. But 300 dollars in the US is the rumor. Um, we've got Bloggy in as well. Hello to you, mate. We've got Jay Kylie in. Nice to see you. Um, Sumberlin says um, greetings from a grim and frostbitten kingdoms of Central Europe. Where is the rumor coming from? I don't know where it originated, um, but certainly um, there's a channel called Wargamer Fritz. Who did a video about it? I know Rob Oren from Rob's Tabletop World has talked about it. I've seen it um, somewhere else mentioned it as well. I forget the name now, but at least three or four channels I've seen have been talking about this, plus all of the kind of the chatter online and stuff. I don't know where it originated, but that's that it, like I can't substantiate it, it, and that's why I'm very openly from the start saying it's a rumor. It's not something I've made up. It's something I've heard elsewhere. And, and I want to talk about the validity of that, really, and, and, and if it's true, um, like, sort of, what does that mean? Um, we've got Foible Games, hello to you. Phil Campbell, VJ, says, sup, folks, <laughs> nice to see you. Uh, we've got Sam Samir Patel in, he says, glad to finally catch a live stream. Welcome to a live stream, mate, I hope you're well. Um, we've got Forehead as well, says, if you've got kids, I would suggest the price is not irrelevant. Well, we'll come back to that, mate. The, the, the price is irrelevant, and I'll tell you why that's the main topic for tonight. So, um, and you see, I'm, I'm, uh, fingers crossed we're being trolled with rumours. Um, yeah, I, I think it's just a rumour. I think it's probably somebody's out of thin air, if I'm honest. But, it's it, you know, we, we don't know anything more about it yet at the minute. It's good to kind of um, to kind of spitball these ideas and let, let's have a little bit of chat about stuff. Um, just caves in as well. Says, "What is three hundred dollars in old money?" I'll come to that, mate. Uh, Michael Olson, hello to you as well. Andy Smith, saying about um, three hundred dollars, about two hundred and twenty quid. Do not, um, <laughs> do not match dollars with the current exchange rate. This is this is GW exchange rates, which make absolutely no bearing on what actually global exchange rates are. Don't forget that. Um, Simon Tuckley saying there, based on GW's price matching. Uh, Phil Wilkinson, hello to you, fella. Glenn Griffin's in as well. Nice to see you. Um, <laughs> Vichy saying, nothing neckbeards love to do more than speculate on a price they can get angry about. Um, yeah, and that's what that's what I want to kind of talk about tonight. I want to tell you why the price the price is irrelevant. If if it's three hundred dollars, it's three hundred dollars. If it's thirty dollars, it's thirty dollars. The price is is irrelevant really. Um, Joe twenty seven, hello to you, mate. Hope you're well. Notice the, the Spurs symbol there as well. I, ho I hope a better season for you next year, mate. That's all I can say. Uh, Rui's saying good evening there. Lee Russ is in as well. Nice to see you, mate. Um, Scott said he's cleaning and assembling his Malifaux Dreamer core box. Nice, mate. Um, Talison's saying, just thinking GW spreads this room with themselves to see how we react. I'll come on to that very point, mate. It's on my list here of things I want to talk about. You know I'm always well prepped. I've got my page of notes. I've gone through all the different things I want to talk about. That might just be on there. <laughs> Marcus is saying, who won the game yesterday? I don't watch football. Yes, mate, the um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won the Super Bowl last night. I must admit, we were kind of having a very brief chat in the uh, in the Patreon um, Discord chat last night, and I was watching it, and I got it probably about halfway through the first quarter, and the, everyone was saying, no, oh, I really want the... Um, I really want the Chiefs to win this one. And I said, I can only see the Buccaneers winning this. I can only see this game going one way. The Chiefs were giving away far too many penalties. Um, who else we got? Tiberius Wallace, nice to see you. Colton Lanes in as well. Uh, and Paul Inman there as well, saying uh, $300 is comparable to Necromunda Dark Uprising, so it's hardly implausible. Again, mate, yes, I'll, I've got that. Phil says, a whole page. It's a whole two pages, mate, and I write really small. <laughs> Right, uh, Colton saying I was hoping to be a close game. 
yeah, I think once once he got to half time, it, it was almost over by that point. I think unless they came out with like kind of firing the bellies, the Chiefs and uh, Patrick Mahomes played well. The rest of the team were did really, really let, let themselves down a bit there. Uh, good morning as well to Ben Davy. Right, we've got a good number of folks in tonight, so I think what I'll do is if I switch across to the oh why does that why is that a different colour? Is that cool? Oh, I just it looked like it went dark there. <laughs> Uh, let me set that away and we'll 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 get chatting about the main topic tonight if i come up with anything while we're talking about the main topic tonight um, and you want to kind of something from it to kind of go back and, and and check on afterwards if you type at blackjack legacy in your comment it highlights it on my screen and i and i get to kind of see it later on so if you've got any specific um if you've got any specific comments about that I'll, uh, I'll come back and see it. Um, Big Red Bear, thank you very much for the donation. He said, great seeing the stream. I will see that GW's pricing at 300 matters. They hope it sells more than people avoid it. I know I'd not buy it at that. We'll come on to that now with the main topic. So tonight's main topic is about a rumour that says that um, Cursed City, Warhammer Quest Cursed City, could be as much as three hundred dollars. Um, this has not come from me. There's a bit of a rumor kind of doing the rounds on the internet. We all know how everyone likes to speculate on rumors, and in in lieu of any kind of real kind of deep uh, information at the moment, let's speculate on it. Let's let's look into that and see what we think. Uh, I will say, so far as in, in my own personal opinion, I probably don't think that it's going to be as much as that. Um, however, let's let's kind of look at it at how plausible is it really. So as I said. As I started off, really, this is pure speculation. There is no confirmed official price, so it's not exactly time to kind of like get up in arms and get the pitchforks out at this point in time. It potentially, now, now, sorry, if we say that, let's assume that it, that it is three hundred US dollars. That would equate to about one hundred and eighty pounds in the UK, and um, that would equate to five hundred Australian dollars, and it would equate to about two hundred and forty euros. Now, um. That's not implausible. That's not out of the realms of what GW charge for things. I mean, if you look at Necromunda Dark Uprising, it currently costs two hundred and ninety dollars. Um, that is one hundred and seventy-five pound in the UK. It is four hundred and ninety dollars <laughs> in Australia. Sorry, Australia, uh, and it's two hundred and thirty euros over in Europe as well. So they do have kind of they do have form for these expensive big boxes. I know Adeptus Titanicus was was expensive as well. Um, now, if we compare it to Blackstone Fortress, um, Blackstone Fortress sold for £95 in the UK, which was €150, Euros, uh, sorry, $150 in the US. Um, it was $220 Australian dollars and €125. Euros. Now, the thing is, and I'll, kind of, I'll come on to this as my second point, really, we can't compare Blackstone Fortress with, um, with Curse City because we have absolutely no idea what's in the box. All we've seen so far is we've seen that there is, um, what was it again? I think there's 11 minis of being kind of like either either being shared with us so far, three we've seen, or they've been kind of like there's a silhouette on the Curse City website. And that's all we've seen so far. We've not seen anything about the size of the campaigns. We've not seen what the boards look like. We've not seen tokens. We've not seen if there's any terrain in the box for a change. We've not seen how many minis are in there. We don't know anything of any substance about what's in the box. So could it be 300 um, American dollars? Yeah, quite plausibly it could be, if there's enough stuff in the box that justifies that cost. Now, if we think about Blackstone Fortress, there were 44 minis in the box um, for that price. So it's quite plausible we could get 80 minis in the box. Like it's not it's not outside the realm of man that we would get that kind of uh, that kind of many many minis in a box if we're talking about like sort of expansion type things in there and I'll come on to expansions in a bit. Uh, Silver Tower had fifty one minis in the box, so there is definitely form kind of we talked about many years ago as well. But there was like, plenty of minis in that box, and I think Shadows of a Hammer Hall. I think when I did a bit of research, there was only about thirty one minis in that particular one. So it's quite it is plausible. Do I believe it? As I said at the start. No, I actually don't. But it is plausible if they put enough stuff in the box, then it could justify the three hundred dollar price tag. Now, if we also compare this to kind of Kickstarter board games, which essentially this is a board game. It's it's not a miniatures game in the way that sort of we think of with 
with Warcry or we think of a Vager Sigma or something like that. It is a much more kind of Gloomhaven um, kind of role playing experience, board game experience. And we see a lot of these board games uh, on Kickstarter going for hundreds and hundreds of, of dollars. And people get caught up in that kind of, in that Kickstarter stuff. Sometimes it's Kickstarter exclusive and you can only ever buy it there. Um, sometimes it will come to retail later, but there's always that thought of, well, we'll, we'll pay a little bit extra at retail, so um, I'll get it at Kickstarter. But what people do is they, they spend quite easily $300, $400 sometimes, upwards to $500, um, to get a lot of stuff. And if this comes with a lot of stuff to justify that $300 price tag, it's not unlike what we see at Kickstarter. Now, what I would say about Kickstarter is we pledge that, that kind of money, three or $400, on a game that we don't know how it plays yet, on miniatures that we don't know the quality of. We sometimes back a game without seeing exactly everything that you're going to get for your money, and then we have to wait two years for it to arrive. With this instance, let's assume that it's $300. We'll be able to see playthroughs online, probably, We'll certainly be able to see what's inside the box. Um, we know the quality of stuff that GW like sort of produce. So at least you're kind of, if you do decide to buy it at $300, at least you can kind of see what you're getting for your money. Now that kind of takes me on to the next stage. And that is that it's your choice. Like value is very, very subjective. And if it's if it's worth it to you, then it's then then it's worth it to you. So if you if you think that the contents of the box is worth three hundred dollars, and I think I should just clarify, I'm not sure if I said it before, but three hundred dollars kind of works out at, um, let's see, where was it, one hundred and eighty pounds, um, five hundred Australian dollars, two hundred and forty euros. Um, if you think if you think that there is enough stuff in this game, be it enough miniatures, enough gameplay experience, maybe some terrain. Maybe it comes with a novel. <laughs> like this, there's, there's any number of things that could come inside this box. Um, if you think the quality is good enough to justify the price, then it, it comes down to personal cost. And this is one of the reasons why I say the price is irrelevant. Because actually, the the irrelevancy of this is it'll it'll cost what it costs, and it's still up to you to make the judgment. One, can I afford it? And two, do I think it's worth the money? And me personally, in my in my old in my old life when I used to do a, a proper nine to five job, I had spare cash, I had disposable income, and even if I thought it was maybe just save value or not quite value, but I really wanted it, I'd have had some spare cash to be able to buy that. I don't have that kind of spare cash today. Doing doing this for a living now does not afford me a glamorous lifestyle. It means I kind of I have to cut back on all of those kind of frivolous spends. So for me, this this game in particular, I have to really, really want this game if it's gonna if it's gonna be expensive. However, that expense is still based upon do I think I'm getting value for money out of the box set? If the game was four hundred dollars or two hundred pounds or whatever it would be, I still have to kind of look at it and say, look, two hundred quid's a lot of money, but do I think it's worth it? Is it something that I still really want? And I think sometimes we almost think that everybody is kind of entitled to everything. And that's not always the case. Games Workshop have got different pricing for different products. They have entry-level games where you can kind of get in at a lower cost. They have games that you can buy over time and build up an army and um, sort of spend a smaller amount of disposable income over time. And then they have things like Necromunda Dark Uprising, which is kind of, look, this is for the people that really want it. This is for the people that kind of want that big box, expensive kind of content, if you like. So this is what I mean about how the price is almost irrelevant. The price is the price. If it's $300, but the contents are absolute garbage in comparison for the price, then it sets a really bad precedent, and I think that's something to worry about. But if you get the amount of stuff inside the box that justifies the cost, then it just comes down to whether you think, whether you, one, you can afford it, and whether two, you think it's worth buying. And, and that's why I'm saying it's irrelevant. Do I think it's $300? No, I don't. But 
I, I do think it's not worth getting up in arms about the price of something. It's like, if you want to buy a Rolex watch, they're damn expensive. But, it, like, are they worth it? Not to me, really, not me personally, but I'm sure to some people they probably feel they are. Is there other options? Yes, I, I can buy any other kind of a watch and it'll tell me the time. And in the same way as this, if I think it's too expensive and I can't afford it, there are other games that I can afford and, and I'll have to just go and play them. Like, it's it's not like I've got the, got the God-given right to have every single game that comes out and they should all be priced so that I can afford them. That's just not the way the, that's not the, way the world works. And that's what I'm kind of getting out about it being irrelevant. Now, there are a couple of things as well that I kind of want to touch on. One is, actually, from a scalping position, this may actually stop some of the scalpers. It may that the fact that they would have to shell out more money might mean actually that the people that, that want it and can afford it are actually the ones who pick it up. Um, and that it, it might actually limit people picking them up just to split the box down and, and sell the minis out of it as well. So the people that actually want the game might actually get the game. It's a bit of a kind of a side thing and it's not a reason to do it, but it's a possible th a side effect of it. And the other one is, and somebody touched on this in the chat, it could just be a whole big market employee. This could be Games Workshop leaking out this mythical price of $300 to kind of see what the to kind of see what the kind of the effect is, to see what the community says, to see what people feel about it. If everybody just goes like ah, that's it. I am never paying $300 for a game, maybe they'll pull the price back. If they say it's $300 and then they come out and go actually it's 250, I don't know where that rumor come from. And everyone says, 250 that's a bargain. I was banking on 300 Then it's just a market employee. So there's all sorts of things in play here. But I think the main point I want to kind of get at is, one, I don't think it's going to be 300 But if it is, and the stuff in the box justifies the cost, and when I say cost, I, I saw somebody there and is it, it, just saying, the cost is divorced from production value. It doesn't matter how much something costs to make. You have to you have to take that out of the equation. Like how much does it cost to, to make a pair of Nike trainers out in the Far East? We still pay how much how much do a pair of Jordans cost, for example? How much do off white trainers cost? But how much do people pay for them? How much do Louis Vuitton bags cost versus making the cost of another bag? How much does a Rolex watch cost versus the cost of a like a, a swatch or something like that? It then they're not joined up those kind of things. So you have to take production cost out of this. You have to take that kind of stuff out of it. You have to decide for yourself, is the price that they are charging, do you think it's worth for what you're getting for your money? And that goes for everything in life, whether it's a car, whether it's a house, whether it's the clothes that you wear, whether it's furniture that you buy, whether it's food, whether it's the restaurants that you eat in, <laughs> when eating out at restaurants are a thing. So that's what I mean about the price is irrelevant. If they're just taking the absolute piss and basically it's $300, for basically what we would usually pay $95 for or $100 for previously, then then that that's the point when people just actually vote with their wallets and say, no, I refuse to buy this. But as I said before, if the contents of the box are worth the price that they're asking, what what does it matter what the price is? That's what I, that's why I mean it's irrelevant. That's what I mean, is that as long as the contents are worth the cost, then the price is kind of irrelevant. So I'd really like to know what you think. Obviously, there's some folks in the chat here already on the live stream. <laughs> I can see all of the all of the kind of information flying past my eyes. Um, I'm going to read up on this now. But if you're watching this back on the Tuesday Eclipse video and you've got something really strong you want to say about, if you completely disagree with me, if you agree with me, if you think I've missed a point, pop it down in the comments. I would love to have a discussion about it. So, folks, let me go back and uh, and kick on with some of the stuff that you've been talking about. Um, let's have a look. Um, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll back a little bit here and have a look. So, um, yeah, this was where Big Bear did a donation. There, I just caught that one. Thank you very much. Um, Foible saying, I think a bunch of YouTubers are being sucked in. Hypothetically, if it was 180 quid, the content would have to be insane. As I mentioned on the str on, on the kind of the chat there, mate. It's not unknown. I mean, look at the price of the um of the gargants of, of the big giants, the new ones. They were like a hundred pounds. Um, and you really needed kind of three of them to make an army. Like, look at the price of the Necker Under Dark Uprising box. It's it's not unheard of for things to be expensive. But again, you kind of you pay your money, you take your choice. Uh, Brandon saying, are we thinking Warhammer Quest would have some type of new terrain? No, I've got no idea, mate. I, like, like, 
all I'm kind of saying is, is like I said before, I don't pers- personally think it's going to be this expensive. But if it is, then there's got to be something bloody good inside that box to justify it. And if that thing that's bloody good is it's got like 100 minis in it, if that thing is it's got terrain in it, if it's something completely different out of left field that we're not expecting, then that would maybe justify it costing more money. But at this point, it is pure speculation, and that's what the stream's about tonight, really. It's almost a bit of wish list, and like, let's assume everybody can afford to buy it. Let's assume everybody wants to spend it. Um, if you if it was going to cost three hundred quid or three hundred dollars, what would you want to see in the box? If it was going to cost one hundred and eighty pounds, what would you want to see in the box for that price? Um, VG says, let's not talk about a football game. We actually know the outcome of. We can talk about the price of a box we know nothing about. Exactly, mate. Uh, Lord Maiden says, please check the chat for sound after you change camera screens, please. I checked it before I started, mate. Um, Dave says, will Curse City be a pretty poly with passable substance, just like Warhammer Silver Quest for us? That's a personal thing as well, mate. I actually really loved Silver Tower. If Silver Tower is one of my favourite play experiences, I would choose Silver Tower over something like Hero Quest, for example, a million times. People talk about Blackstone Fortress. I've not played it personally, so I, I'm only speaking from anecdotal um, information. But people that loved Blackstone Fortress really loved it. And if this is a continuation of those kind of rules with some improvements, I, I can see it being a great game. Um, <laughs> I, can't, I can't pronounce that name. Is it... Uh, Xerxes, <laughs> seeing about forgetting the Middle Earth tax, exactly, mate. Yeah, uh, Marcus says, All I know is Blackstone Fortress and Necromunda boomed, at least here in my city. I know basically all the gamers here, and only two people I know bought Blackstone, and that's it. Uh, so I, I think you mean they bombed and as opposed to boomed. But the thing is, mate, this the Blackstone Fortress sold completely sold out. They had to do another reprint not that long ago, actually, and it came back into stock again. Necromunda Uprising, I, I know people that bought it. I know quite a lot of people that bought it, but I do know that it never sold out on the GW website. So it depends. It's all kind of, it swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Um, I must have missed Krabby's content there. He's when it went six in the head, so I'm very pleased to hear that. Animus says, uh, hi there, between 250 and 300 is kind of expensive, but also depends, depends on the content. Blackstone Fortress content was worth the price. Yeah, that's kind of the crux of it, mate. Yeah. Hello, Jack, as well. How are you doing? Lord Technopan says, do you think terrain is likely? I think if GW really want, and I'll come on to the reason why I think they might potentially want to price the, put the price up. If they want to push the price up a bit, um, then I think the only way to do that is to inc- include lots and lots of minis or include some terrain in there as well. Now, we've seen a lot of stuff. We've seen, the, like, it's kind of door city everywhere, isn't it? The amount of doors that come in the kind of, um, in the catacomb stuff, the amount of stuff that comes in the new kill team box, Pariah Nexus. We've seen all these new doors and, and bits of terrain and stuff. It's quite possible that, that, that they might do. Now, the reason why I think they might potentially want to push the price up is... So we know during the pandemic, they basically they, they've got a bit behind with stuff. They've not been able. They, they had some time out. They weren't allowed. They weren't allowed to really go into the factory and produce stuff until they made it COVID safe. And once they got back in, they were behind. We know that kind of ninth edition was delayed. We know things like um, Warhammer um, Warcry Catacombs was delayed. We know that the damn the, what they call again the death, not the Death Watch, the um, the plague stuff. God, the Death Guard, I'm a mind blank there. We know the Death Guard had been delayed. We know there's been a knock-on effect and lots of things have been delayed. And the only way they can get back on track again is to do one of two things. They either take something out of the production schedule, which they're not going to do because everything needs to be kind of released as a plan for it, or they make slightly less of something. Now, one way of guaranteeing that you will sell less of something is by putting the price up. However, if you put the price up enough and include enough contents that it's still classed as value for money, you might sell less physical sort of boxes, but if you're selling them at twice the price they normally cost, you're still making the same amount of profit. Uh, and that might be a, 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 like a financial reason, a business reason, why it might make sense to bring out an expensive box right now. Maybe that wasn't the way it was originally planned. Maybe they, they planned to have kind of like three or four um sort of uh, expansions for the game down the line and maybe they've decided to include those expansions in the box and we had a chat a brief chat about expansions today in the, in the patreon chat today um and, and 
Um, I think it was James James Bray was saying about how he really he really liked he like he liked the expansions for um, for Blackstone Fortress and they sold really really well. But what I would said was, if you release expansions for a game, you're essentially releasing something that will only sell to people who bought Blackstone Fortress, and even then it will only sell to a portion of the people that bought Blackstone Fortress. If you push those expansions into the core box, bump the price up then everybody that buys that box buys an expansion. It's how it works in Kickstarter. It's one of the reasons why when you buy Kickstarter board games, they cost three, four $400, but they come with like a couple of expansions or something like that, and everybody thinks, oh, but I'm getting loads of stuff for my money. What most people don't realise is they will never, ever play those expansions. As long as they live, because they scatter around and play a lot of different games, they'll never get to play those expansions. It's one of the reasons I've really pulled back from Kickstarters is because I, th- I think it's false. It's false value. Yes, you get a lot of stuff for your money, but if you're never going to play it, it's kind of hardly worth it. So that's pure speculation again as well. I have no information that that's what's going to happen. But it's spitballing ideas. It's it's just it's just chatting stuff, isn't it? It's just having a bit of a chat about things. Um, so it's it's a potential. So as I've said many times, do I think it's going to be three hundred dollars? Probably not. I think we're going to see like one hundred and twenty-five quid, maybe one hundred and thirty quid. What would that be? Something like along the lines of. Um, I'm just looking at my price and charts and stuff that I've been doing things. Um, Blackstone Fortress was £95. I can, I can see it being more than that. It wouldn't surprise me if we're about £125, which would put, like, dollar-wise, it would probably put it up to just sub 200 maybe. Australians maybe up to about two, uh, three, 320, 340, something like that. Maybe up to about 150, 160 euros. I can see that being more realistic. Um, however... If the rumours are true, who knows? Um, Daniel Jones says, it has to be some amazing terrain in there. Mordheim-esque, I'm guessing. There's a, there's a potential, mate, isn't it? I mean, let's not forget, that the way that GW normally launch new terrain is they put it in a box set. And basically, they get loads of people to buy it really quickly. And, that, and what that does is, that influx of cash and the, the fact that they can make it in big enough quantities because it's going in a box set, means that it pays for the moulds. If they just make some new terrain and sell it, not many people buy terrain in comparison to buy minis. So it costs a lot of money to design, to produce, to, to get to kind of get the moulds made for terrain, um, and then basically they're relying upon lots of people to buy it. What they've been doing for a number of years now is with Shadow War Armageddon, with the Kill Team starter box, with the Warcry starter box, with Necromunda Dark Uprising starter box, um, they've been putting terrain into these boxes in order to shift it in big volumes and pay back the investment on those tools. So it wouldn't if if it is three hundred dollars, it wouldn't surprise me if they find a way to put terrain into this game, even if it's just to like for visual appeal. It's a way to kind of stealthily get it into the boxes. Um, Phil saying people lose their minds because it's GW, but we'll sink three hundred dollars into Kickstarter. I have to wait a year for exactly the comments I made, mate. Exactly the comments. Um, <laughs> Palmsy says, "Dare I say, GW engineer all this hype on purpose? Of course they do, mate. But but that's their job. Like that's that's their marketing department's job. Get people talking about our products. It's every marketing company's job. It's just that some do it better than others." Um, Peter says, if "There's no terrain. I'm out for sure. Depends on the price, mate. The price could be nothing like that." Marcus says, technically we've seen four of the minis for the Hunter and two of the bad guys with two minions. However, on on the little kind of the chart thing, the 11 hidden things, they've only shown the kind of like the skeleton captain. The other ones that they've shown, they haven't put in. So the skeleton captain must be like a boss and the other ones are just kind of minions that are in the game. So if you think about Blackstone Fortress, 51 minis, I think I said, or 41 minis, was it? Uh, 44 minis. There's a number of hero models and a number of kind of like boss characters. And then lots of kind of like minions and stuff like that in the game. Of the 11 kind of main characters, heroes and bosses if you like, they've shown us three so far. Although they have shown us more models. Um, Chuck and Deb says, could be $350 of value. Time will tell. Exactly, exactly. Good evening, Marco. Nice to see you, mate. Uh, Paul saying, if it is $300, it'll be some kind of scenery, he reckons. Ch- um, Chuck and Deb Taylor says, four more kicks the price up, not the value. Um, the thing is, four more only works if there's not enough to go around. Something I was working on for a, for a potentially another video about, like, kind of like, is scalping really bad? 
there's a number of different ways that kind of games come out you have unlimited supply and unlimited opportunity so that means there is as many games to go around and there's as many people who want to buy it so if you buy in like kind of like monopoly is a perfect example of unlimited supply unlimited opportunity everybody's aware of it everybody's a potential customer but it's not going to kind of sell out anytime soon then you've got kind of like unlimited supply but limited opportunities these are things like uh, Kickstarter games, where basically they are, there's an unlimited supply of those because as many people can go on and buy that Kickstarter um, at the point when it's live. However, there is um, limited opportunity because it's only live for two weeks, for example. I know you get like backer kits and stuff. But essentially, once once they're gone, they, they're like, you can't buy them again. The ones that are Kickstarter exclusive, those are the kind of things that end up getting like scalpers to buy more and sell them down the line for more money. Then you get what's called limited supply and limited opportunity. These are things like, um, let's say, like convention specials. Let's say, kind of, um, Mantic are selling, um, or let's say, GW are going to uh, Adepticon and they're selling a show special. There's a limited supply because they'll only make so many of them. Um, and then there is a limited um, opportunity because only people attending the event can buy it and i think gen generally people feel if i missed out on that well i couldn't get it anyway i wasn't at the event like some people ask people to get them for them and that kind of stuff but if i miss out i miss out that's just how it is and then you get limited supply and unlimited opportunity and that's where a lot of the games workshop stuff fit in there is a limited number of stuff because they're only making this as one run and it's gone think about things like um, what they called, you know, like the like the AOS boxes, the the forty k boxes where they put the two factions in, those kind of stuff. Think about Warcry starter set before it sold out, the Kill Team starter set. There's a limited amount of stuff, but there's unlimited opportunity. Everybody has an op opportunity to go and buy it, and that's the point when it gets really, really frustrating. That's the point when it's like scalpers get involved, and that's when they hike the price up and stuff like that. Um. Let's have a look here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't pronounce that name. The one with the beginning with the X there, so you don't have to pay Middle Earth tax on Kickstarter WP exchange rates. Um, Kagres says, are you rich, mate? I'm not rich at all, mate. That, that was the whole point. That was what I said in, in the in the stream, is that basically I don't I don't have like kind of spare income that I used to have. When I worked a 9 to 5 job, I, I had a good salary and I had sort of like spare, I had, I had, disposable income this is my full-time job now this is what i do this is what pays my bills people's donations and stuff like that is what pays my bills people on patreon people buying t-shirts like this that's what pays my bills now i ain't getting rich from this i'm not even making minimum wage which is why i have to be really really sort of conscious about what i do spend any money i can save I have to be really conscious about what games I spend them on. And that, and that is my point. That's why the prices are relevant. Because if it is $300 and I haven't got $300, then it doesn't matter. I can't have it anyway. I can't buy it if I don't have the money. Um, if the game is $300, but it's only got 100 quid's worth of stuff in it, like then I, I wouldn't buy it even if I did have the money. So it's not about being like rich or having money or anything like that. It's about making that price-value comparison that only you can decide for yourself and only you can decide whether you've got this disposable income to buy it. Um, Simon's saying you, we can all vote with our wallets. You can, mate. That, that's the point. If you don't think it's worth the money, then you don't buy it. That's that's, that's Everybody should do that. Um, Warwick Dog S says, what's in the box? <laughs> Almost makes me think of Brad Pitt. Yes. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow's head. John says, evening all. What have I missed? Just finished work. I don't know how much of that you caught me. I assume you caught more. Uh, Andy's saying, Ex hobbies are expensive. It's personal choice. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's... I, th I think people do get annoyed about the idea of this hobby should be for everybody. And I get the fact that it's, it's a great hobby, but there are many, many different accessibility points to get in. Um, in the same way that if golf is your hobby, um, you can kind of go to the driving range and you can hire a club and you can hire a few balls and you can go and knock a few things around. Or if you've got sort of bags of cash, you can go and sign up for a membership for a local golf course and you can buy yourself some fancy ping uh, clubs and woods and you can really kind of go to town your hobby. If photography is your hobby, you can literally go out and take pictures with your with your iPhone or your, or your kind of your Samsung phone or whatever. 
and you can go and take very nice pictures. Mobile phones have really good cameras on these days. Or you can go out and you can spend £2,000 on a camera body and another £1,000 on a lens and this on tripod. Every hobby has it, has it, uh, can be expensive, but they also have entry points. And our hobby has entry points too. There are many games that don't cost that much money to get into. There are many games where you can use just the rule set and any minis you've got. Use whatever you can get your hands on. So I'm not trying, like, this is not me trying to be elitist or anything like that to say like, well, if you can't afford a tough look kind of thing. But unfortunately, that's just the way of the world. That, that, that's not limited to Games Workshop stuff. That's not limited to our hobby. That is just the way the world is. Like, I might really want a fancy car, but I can't afford one. Like, I don't have this kind of, like, um, any any more rights than anybody else. Like, I want a fancy car. Why Why are they so expensive? Why are they not cheap enough so I can buy them? That's that's just life. That's, that's how consumerism works. Um... Simon says, we need to wait and see what's in the box. Yes, exactly, mate. Uh, <laughs> Peter says, don't try and make it sound reasonable value. I didn't get a full rant against GW yet. Um, Jesse says, stop quoting Australian dollars. I'm I'm just co- quoting them across the price. He's saying it won't be 500 Australian dollars. I'm quoting the price. The, the prices that I'm quoting are direct comparisons on the Games Workshop website. It's nothing to do with the exchange rates. It's whatever the Games Workshop price is. So, for example, um, Necromunda Dark Uprising is £175 in the UK. It's $290 in the US, and it's $490 in Australia. That's what I'm using as a, as a basis for the price comparisons. I'm not using any kind of... Um, uh, I'm not using any exchange rates. I'm using GW's on-site pricing. Um, um, Busey said, if it's good enough for you, it's good enough for me. If it's, if it's good enough for two, that's what I want to see. <laughs> Simon Tookley says, when we're all on lockdown and not getting games in, single-player games are prized. Maybe this is a thought GW are also thinking the same. It crossed my mind as well, mate. Because I, I noticed somebody early on in the, in, in the comments said, like, if it's $300, I, I'd get much better player from like playing Frostgrave or something like that. But one, would you get an equal amount of stuff? You know what I mean? I, I know you can play the game with, with less stuff, but if, if it like you know it's if it's not equal amounts of stuff, it's not equal. If you're just saying, well, I can play game A or I can play game B, there are hundreds of games out there. It doesn't really matter what it is. Play whichever game you like the idea of. Um... But yeah, I, would, I do wonder whether the thought of, well, actually, this is a game people can actually play while lockdowns are happening. Is that factoring in? I would hate to think that that was um, profiteering from from the situation we all find ourselves in. But let's be honest, they're, they're there to kind of, their shareholders are their number one priority. And then their customers come down the line a little bit further. So... Um, Samir Patel says, the worrying part is that many people will cry about the speculated price of $300, but because of GW's new FOMO business model, it'll still sell. Makes it hard to say vote with your wallet. The vote with your wallet thing I only agree with is when they are selling something that is not worth the money. Like for me personally, I thought those gargants, those um, those big giant things, were not worth £100. And I, I didn't plan on buying one anyway, but guess what? I haven't bought one. Um, but that's that's no loss to GW because they sold by the bucket load. Lots of people went and bought them and they justify the spend because to them, they thought they were value for money or they thought they were getting something that was worth the £100 they spend. Um, this game goes exactly the same, e- even if it's £125, let's say. Even if it's £125 and I can afford it. Um, if I still don't think it's value for money, if it's got like 20 models inside the box and a few bits of cardboard for £125, quid, I'm, I probably, I, I still won't buy it. I'll vote with my wallet then. So I, I, I still, I believe voting with your wallet is a really, is a really legitimate thing for everybody to do. But only if you don't think it's worth it. If you still think it's, if you think it's worth it, then buy it. That's that's the thing. And it's not like they're going to just keep putting the prices up um, until people get sick. There needs to be a, a concentration of people who don't think it's value anymore. That's that's the point. That's that's the breaking point. That's the tipping point. Anything up to that point is just is just how business works. That's why Apple iPhones keep getting a hundred dollars more expensive every year. They put a few extra kind of bells and whistles on and and charge more money for it. That that's just that's consumerism. That's just how it works. Um, let's have a look here. <laughs> 
I blast those here, $300 burger dollars. Um... <clears throat> I mean, the other side is, I don't know if I mentioned that on the stream before, it's quite possible that, that somebody's cocked up with this, and it might be 300 Australian dollars. Because if it's 300 Australian dollars, that brings it down to like £105. So <laughs> that's that's more kind of plausible, really. It would bring it down to like $170 in the US. It's quite possible, some, if that's the case, somebody's got the wrong end of the stick. Um, John Ashley Smith, hello there, John. Says the only way I'd be able to purchase something hobby related for three hundred dollars if I had a look on the lottery, not a chance otherwise. I I I think there's a psychological thing about when it's when it's three hundred dollars all in one kind of hand over my money. That's a lot of money. But if you factor in all the people that go out and buy a full army, all the people that go and drop four hundred dollars on on Kickstarter for something they're not going to see for eighteen months or, t or two years. Those people like, are still around. I, I don't think I could do it. I'd really have to kind of like save and and be 100% sure it was something I really wanted. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, Ruby says, for this price, the box must have loads of terrain like Dark Uprising. Potentially, yeah. Um, VG says, moral of the story is people love to carry on. If you've got nothing to carry on, it <laughs> makes them wake up. Um, let's have a look as well. Thomas Moore saying he'll be picking up the game on release regardless. I intend to pick up the game as, as long as I think it's worth the money they're asking, like I've said before. Um, Big Red Bear says, not during the pandemic, of course. What was what was that bit about? I don't know what that was in relation to, mate. Foible says, selling at scalper prices to stop the scalpers. I, I Again, it, it, it's not like they're kind of... They're not bumping the price up because of demand. Um... The only reason they would be able to bump the price up is if it was actually worth worth it and stuff. Um, yeah, John Ashley Smith says the Adeptus Titanicus box was totally out of whack too, with nearly three hundred and fifty dollars here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Blastos saying I won't deny. I really want. I really want it too, mate. I, I love the idea of it. I love the minis we've seen. I know GW minis are quality. Um, I really want it. I don't want the three hundred dollars price to be true. But if it is, then I really want to see some stuff that's in that box that makes it justifiable. Because otherwise, it'll be a big miss from me as well. Will I be sad that I don't get to play the game? Of course I will, but is it, is it the end of the world? Are there only other games out there? It's not, it's not like it's 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 a one-off, if you like. It's it's a game in a box. It's not like, well, I got halfway through collecting an army and then they whacked the prices up. Like that, that I can see people getting up in arms about. Like if I'm halfway through collecting a forty k army, and then all of a sudden it's going to cost me an extra thousand uh, thousand pound to finish it, then then I can understand people getting up in arms. But when it's a one off box, a game in a box with everything contained that you need to play it, you either buy it or you don't. That that's the point about my the price is irrelevant. It's it, it's only kind of it becomes about your value perception. It becomes personal opinion. It becomes your your disposable income. It becomes about it becomes about you and what you think about it and whether it's worth it to you. That's why it's irrelevant. Um, Cagre says, but Rolex uses materials that has value, but miniatures are all the same plastic. Um, there's there's some element to that, but at the end of the day, a Rolex still just tells the time. It still just tells you what time it is at that point. I've got a phone that tells me what time it is. I've got a watch that costs like next to nothing that tells you what time it is. I can ask somebody what time it is. Like it's still just a device for telling you what time it is. You are paying for status symbol. You're paying for maybe more expensive materials, but you're paying for some other stuff. When it comes to miniatures. There's an element in that. You, you are paying a GW tax because you're paying for the big the big boys type stuff. But you're also paying more money because their production is in the UK and it's not done in the Far East. Um, their sculptors are generally kind of um, sort of better than a lot of other companies. I'm not saying that, that, that there are not other fantastic sculpts out there. But they, they, they employ full-time sculptors. They don't use freelancers. They've got a lot more marketing money to spend. They've got a, a workforce of nearly a thousand people in the UK. I'm not saying it's justifiable, but what I'm saying is, as a business, they have costs that other companies don't have, um, and and that's what pushes the price up a bit as well. We had this conversation. I think it was not last week, the week before as well. But other companies' minis are not actually that much cheaper. It's just that certain games you need less minis to play their games. So if you, I mean, yes, there are companies where you can buy super cheap minis, but then, but then the quality doesn't compare. There are other companies where you can buy minis that where the quality does compare, but then the price per mini actually compares as well. It's just that for Infinity, for example, you might only need ten models, or for um, 
For Malifaux, for example, you only need about 10, 12 models. But actually, the, the price of five models for Malifaux versus the price of five models for 40k are very, very similar. Um, uh, Tyler's saying the only way I would consider $300 is if everything was in, uh, no expansions, the whole thing. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking as well, mate. Yeah, they might just book it out that way. Uh, Big Red Bear says, yeah, I'm willing to pay for overpriced things, but at a certain point, it's outright insulting. But that's that's the different ma difference, mate, about it being overpriced. What I'm not suggesting about it being overpriced and being acceptable, I'm suggesting that it is the right price for the amount of stuff that you get in the box. And that's very, very different to it being overpriced. Um, <laughs> Peter says, I don't know how much Jordan trainers are. You can spend a fortune on a pair of Jordans, mate. They, that's something I get scalping. But when I was talking about like, off-white trainers, off-white trainers are just a designer, basically, that, that kind of like makes changes to other, other, other trainers, if you like. But they sell for like three, four, five hundred pound a pair. Um, and to the people that pay that money, it's, it's worth it to them most of them don't wear them they kind of keep them and they wait until they go up in value and sell them down the line but my point being is you can buy a pair of trainers for 35 quid you can buy a pair of trainers for 350 quid they both do the same thing in the same way you can buy games for 300 dollars you can buy games for 30 dollars they both are a game but the content the the kind of the stuff is different um I'm going to skip ahead now and pick out just some of the ones that were kind of highlighted. Otherwise, I'll be here all night trying to catch up with some of these. Um, Ed was just... Uh, sorry, um, I'll pick a couple of names as well that I haven't seen before as well, just to say hello to. We've got Walter Black saying, uh, compared to some hobbies I've had, like Airsoft and no, Photography. I've done Airsoft, and, mate. I know exactly the price. I still think Wargaming is quite reasonable. Uh, yeah, I would agree, mate. Aquino says, I'm not saying if you can't afford it, tough luck, but... I think I think the point I was making was that's just life. I, like I'm not I'm not sitting here on bags of money saying, well, well, I can afford it, so screw you, kind of thing. I won't be able to afford it either. The point being is, if I can't afford it, th then it's tough luck. I, I can't I can't buy it. That, that's just how it is. That's how life is. That's that's everything. Whether it's kind of I can't afford to stay at that fancy hotel. I can't afford to drive that fancy car. I can't afford to buy a million pound house. That that is just life. That's how things are. Um. Tyler says, you can't afford a fancy car because you weren't born into wealth. I, I, or I could have worked harder. I could have had a different job. I could have chose that money was more important than happiness to me. And I could have went and did a different job. I, I didn't. I chose happiness over over wealth. And I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that choice. Um, Tony says, digging the new style face face fuzz, buddy. <laughs> Will that help keep up the, nor the brutal northeast wind? It's kind, of, it's kind of getting on, isn't it? I mean, I've literally not done anything to it since... I think I think it was like Christmas Day. I decided I was just going to let it go. So that's like had about a month and a half of just just going, mate. It's it's coming in it. And yes, it does make a difference when I go out. It's snowing outside there now. If I go out, get my woolly hat on, mate. It's definitely got a bit of face protection. Um, um, let's have a little count. Rat Hammer, nice to see you in as well. Welcome to the chat. Says so some folks said Bloodborne board game was too expensive. Now want it after seeing the unboxings. Exactly, mate. Look at things like Gloomhaven. Um, the way that, that that all kind of sold out. Look at all the Simon games that people go nuts over. Like there are a lot of people who who spend a lot of money on Kickstarter, and then there are just as many people who will pay over the odds for that game down the line when they can't get it. So that they for them, actually spending more money than somebody else did is still worth it to them. Sunday Psych, hello. <laughs> Australian dollars are the best dollars because we can call them dollary dues. <laughs> Sounds like something off the Simpsons, mate. Um, uh, let's have a look. Tyler saying, Games Workshop does not care about currency exchange rate. They price as much as they can. The way Games Workshop works is they set their own price exchange rate that protects them from any fluctuations in um, in in the international exchange rates. So if they, so, basically, because they plan so far in advance, um, they set a price on kind of let's say they set a price on the first of January. The game doesn't go, go, get to the to the shops until the first of September. There's a lot of things can happen at that particular time between that time with financial um, instabilities and things. So they set their own price that basically protects them against what happens in the world. Do people get screwed over for it? Absolutely, one hundred percent. But at least it's kind of 
it stops them making huge losses, which which is potentially a possibility, and it stops people getting surprised by a price that suddenly doubles in price because exchange rates have changed. I've I've worked in a company in the past where we were buying, we used to buy raw materials in dollars, we used to um, export the product into Europe and sell it in um, sell it in euros and produce it in the UK and obviously have like pounds as as the kind of the manufacturing costs. And if you don't take all of that into consideration, you get you can royally get screwed over, and, and that's why they do it. I, I do I think they've kind of they've gone to the far end of a fault. They've gone too far with it. Absolutely, they could afford to bring it back down. But at some point, when they set that price band, it'll have been roughly about like sort of closer, and then over time, it's just drifted away. Like I remember the first time I went to America on holiday, it was two dollars to the pound. So like things things have changed a lot like over that time. Um, it's all fun and games. There's Nick and Run a Dark Uprising, which people seem to con- confuse for every GW release for the last three years, is sitting on eBay for 20% off even now. It is, mate, but then every shop that's got a copy of it in the UK sells stuff with like 15, 20% off. I'm just going by the list price. This, this game's going to be exactly the same. If this game is £185 on GW's website, you will get shops in the UK who will then sell it for 20% off because that's what they do with new releases. They sell them for 20% off to make sure they can shift the stuff quickly. That's that, that that's, that's not like sort of limited to Dark Uprising. It's pretty much every single release. I don't know what it's like in other regions. I can only speak from the region I live in, but it's pretty much the same uh, for every release. Um... Simon says, what everyone always forgets is how many hours of enjoyment you get out of the product, building, painting, playing, hours in price. I, I'd agree with that to an extent. Um, I think it, and that's where it comes into value and how much you get in the box. Like you could say, well, I'm going to play it for 300 hours, for example. Um, but then if you play it for 300 hours with like five minis or you play it for 300 hours with 100 minis, then that, that's when the kind of the price comparison might, might come in a bit. Aquino says plus GW adds the UK VAT tax to international prices. Um, I don't think they do add the VAT tax, mate. I think it's just it's just their exchange rates. They've got their internal exchange rates. Um, because the price that is on the website, I'm assuming, is the price you pay unless you have local taxes. Um, Louis uh, Panda Bomb says if this is 300 US, I'm going to buy Blackstone Fortress. Yeah, it's back. It's back for sale now. It, it was sold out for quite a while, but it's just come back. The only problem with Blackstone Fortress is the expansions are really hard to get a hold of now. Um, Tyler says Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion is very good and it only costs fifty dollars. It does, mate, and it was sold at like Target, but people were selling them online. All, like, the scalpers got a hold of them and were selling them for like $120, $130 when it first came out because they were in such short supply and people were still willing to pay that money. So that's when it gets a bit screwy. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Lord Technopants says, never mind the form or the price or the contents. Will it come in a crappy cheap box like catacombs? That's what I'm worried about. I think it depends upon the weight of the product, mate, if I'm fair, if I'm honest. That one of the things about the box that came with catacombs, I'd assume that the, the, the pandemic and where they get the materials printed was probably causing some issues. I know there was there was some problems with getting raw, like the packaging materials from China in time. Um, so it... At the end of the day, the, the box wasn't as sturdy as, say, the Kill Team box or the Warcry box, but it, it still got all of the... It's, the box is really only to get the stuff to you in a in a, um, in a a usable sort of way, and it served its purpose. It, you could say... You, you could say, actually, they were over-engineered in the past. Yes, they might be useful for you to use for other things, but actually, in reality, they are just a box to, to get the product to you. Um... I'm scrolling ahead now so I can kind of catch up with some of the chat here. Say hello to a few people as well. Uh, Louis is saying um, the expansions aren't necessary. Yeah, they absolutely are not necessary, mate, yeah. Um, but, which is why the point I made before about Kickstarter and about how when you pay $300 on Kickstarter and they keep pumping them full of expansions where people say, but I'm getting loads of stuff for my money. That is just a stealth way to get you to buy more stuff. And, and it's like what I said before. If you sell Blackstone Fortress... Let's just use round numbers. Let's say a thousand people buy Blackstone Fortress. I know it's sold more than that, but let's just for this for the sake of easy maths, a thousand people bought Blackstone Fortress. And then the first expansion comes out, and six hundred of those people who bought it buy the second expansion, because the other four hundred 
either didn't like the game, they've sold the game, they haven't even played the game yet, so there's no point buying the expansion yet. So 600 people bought this, bought the first expansion. And then the second expansion comes out, and those 600 people is now down to like 400 people because actually the 200 of them didn't really like the expansion. They've given up, they're playing something else now. And what happens is basically as you release expansions, like if I never bought Blackstone Fortress, I have no interest in the expansions. So you're already like sort of limiting the market of who's going to buy your product. And especially at a time now where those production runs could be full of like Space Marine products, let's be honest, which just sell by the bucket load. They could be, like, they could be a new Blood Bowl team that will sell to a lot of people. Um, that's why it, it Kickstarter. What they do is they bump it all into the to the basic to the original pledge. So it might cost you three hundred dollars, and you might say, "But I'm getting five hundred dollars worth of stuff." The real kind of the real crux of it is, you'll probably never play like three hundred quid's worth of that stuff. You'll probably never get to those expansions. Like it's it's overwhelming when you get a Kickstarter ship and it comes in two boxes and the boxes reach the ceiling. It, it's absolutely ludicrous. You will never get unless you only ever play that one game for the rest of your life. You'll never get through that amount of stuff. But it, it's a Kickstarter thing to do. And and if this three hundred dollars is true, it would not surprise me if that's what GW were doing it and maximizing the amount of product that they can sell. Um. Say hello to Michael Cowan as well. Few few names I don't recognise tonight. We've got we've got a good bunch of folks in tonight, a good number of folks. So it's nice just to see it with a few people who haven't been in the chat before or haven't chatted before, I should say. Uh, hello, Anthony Robertson. I think we have chatted before. Uh, Carrie's in as well. Hello to you. So where did the three hundred dollar price tag come from? There's a number of uh, videos on YouTube. There's a number of kind of threads online have been talked about. It, as I said right at the start, it's there is absolutely no kind of sort of imperial fact in this that this is complete rumor mongering it is just pure speculation there's a few people have talked about it it could be complete bollocks but it's just it's it's we're just spitballing we're just talking about it if it turns out to be true then let's hope that there's enough stuff in the box that justifies the cost i personally i personally think we're looking nearer about 125 pounds which i'd say is probably about what did i guess that before Probably about $180, maybe $200, maybe. Um, Philip Paul, nice to see you in. Slippy Tiger says, Death players have been voting with their wallet since AOS began, refusing to buy fine cast Blood Knights and making tons of conversions in said. Yeah, and I and I I completely agree. I don't I don't think people should buy inferior products for more expensive more expensive for more money, if you like. That's exactly what people should do. Um Phil says, I honestly think it'll be about the same size and price as Dark Uprising. As much as I don't believe it, and as much as I don't want to believe it, it, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, Tyler says, some people say they have sources in GW saying it's $300. I think that's where it's come from. So I, I think, I wrote down the name of the channel or it was, what was it again? Wargamer Fritz, I think it was. I think I think it was him that said he had a source. Um, but take that with a pinch of salt on this one. I, I get access to the GW pricing um, a little bit earlier than it goes to general public. Um, somebody told me how I could find it, and I know where to go and look for it. It is public information. Um, everybody has access to it. They just don't know where to look, and I, I'm not going to be the one that kind of shares that information. So the, when it before it goes up for pre-order, I'll be able to find out the price. However, um, that that it certainly is not available. That has not been shared yet. Um... Palmsy said, let's face it, we don't have these conversations as frequently about any other company. Does that not suggest that they might just might be taking the pee a tiny little bit? I don't think it is, mate. I think we don't see this from other companies. One, because other companies are not popular enough to justify a big ticket price. We do, we do see it in Kickstarter. If you're into board games, this is a frequent conversation. Companies like Simon, companies like... Um, like, let's let's see a Steamforge doing big Kickstarter the things like Dark Souls. Um, we see it with like we, we see it a lot in the board game side of things, and they they basically pack the boxes full of plastic miniatures to, to, to drive up the price. And that's not to say that the game players anything to write home about. You just get a lot of stuff. Mythic Games is a prime example of stuff where they basically just absolutely shower you in miniatures, but you pay you pay money for it. Like I think Joan of Arc. The all-in Kickstarter for Joan of Arc was eight hundred pounds if you bought everything. Like that's crazy money. 
and then you've got to pay for shipping for it all as well don't forget but when it comes to miniature wargaming there just isn't another company big enough that could justify those high ticket items i think they bet that they basically they know that they they have to be really keen with their prices because they can't afford something to not sell they can't afford they, they can't afford to take the hits so we talk about it with gw because they're the only one big enough to do it I think things will change over time. Some other companies will start to push the boundaries. As GW pushes their prices up, other companies will start to put their prices up. But the reason we don't talk about Mantic doing this, or the reason we don't talk about, let's say, uh, Infinity, uh, Corvus Belly doing this, or the reason we don't talk about Weird Games doing this, is because they're just they're just not on the same scale. Like they're not even on the same on the same scale as GW. It's a completely different thing. Yes, they all make games, but honestly, like you. If you looked into the financials, they're on a complete different scale. I've quoted this a few times, and it was something that Ronnie from Mantic said. The year that GW gave all of their employees a bonus, the size of the bonus they paid their, paid their employees was bigger than the turnover of Mantic that same year. That just gives you some kind of perspective of the size difference between wargaming companies. Um, where are we up to? Uh, TNG Productions, nice to see you. I don't, I don't know which one of you it is. I assume it's a Tom. Um, says stunning minis, but I really hope the system and contents justify the price. Me too, mate. I, I'm hyped for it. I'm. I love the minis that they've um, that they've shown so far. I loved Silver Tower. I, I love the idea of that kind of um, sort of werewolves, witches, witch hunters, vampires, that kind of stuff. It's right up my street. But if it's just not, if it's not worth the price that they're asking. It'll be a pass. I, I won't be. I won't be just spending money because I get caught up in the hype for it. Those days are getting caught up in the hype are long behind me. Long behind me now. I don't have the spare money to spend on getting caught up in hype. I have to be really choosy about where I spend my hobby money. And uh, yeah, if it's worth it, then I'll buy it. If it's not, if it's not worth it, regardless of the price, then I'll give it a miss. Um, Louis saying, uh, that's what I said in another video. It's not the end of the world if I can't get it. Yeah, exactly. It's it's not the end of the world, is it? It's it, like the world will keep turning, let's be fair. And it's not like I don't have like a hundred other games to be playing. Um, I'll skip ahead a little bit as well. Uh, Tyler saying, I see a few people complain about the price of Bandai kits, but that's rare. And yeah, only GW and Kingdom Death charge this much for a few plastic sprues. I, I disagree with that. I, I don't think the I don't think GW charge a lot more for plastics. You just generally need a lot more of their stuff to play the games. As I mentioned before, if you compare the price of War Cradles Wild West Exodus minis, if you compare the price of Corvus Belly's Metal um, Metal Infinity minis, if you compare the price of, of of the plastic minis from other companies, there's not a massive difference if you compare like. The price of five miniatures compared to the fi price of five miniatures it's just the fact when it comes to like 40k and stuff you you need a lot more stuff to play the game um uh, palmsy says there they're all leaders but we never say is a martyr worth this is drowned earth worth this and so on so as well do you know what it is mate we do say that so for example there are there are lots of games that i've been asked if i want to kind of if do, if do i want them sent to me to do a review of and i look into them and i kind of look and actually i find it hard to justify the price of them and, and i will look at them and say actually i wouldn't buy that i'm going to find a hard time giving this an unbiased review when i already know i would never buy it because i think it's too expensive um so so yeah some, we might not talk about it but like do do i think amada was worth it as an example as you brought that one up Yes, I actually do think Amada was worth it. Do I think Drowned Earth minis are worth it? I think they're a bit on the expensive side, if I'm honest. However, it's a small boutique company. They don't sell by the same num the same volume as GW, so there's there's gonna be a, like a bit more cost because they're made in smaller numbers. So, yeah, like I I think we do talk about the the difference is other companies don't suddenly come out of the bag with like a hundred and eighty pound box set or or a hundred and sixty pound box set. We talked about it for Catacombs. Because it was it was out of the ordinary, really. It was like was I think was it one hundred and thirty pounds, something like one hundred and twenty five pounds. It might have been. I can't remember now. But it, it was it was a lot of money compared to what we were used to be paying. That's why we asked the question. That's why we talk about it. Uh, Simon saying, "Don't forget a twenty percent discount with online sellers." Yeah, that's that's true, mate. I mean, there, there is. 
The only thing I would say about that is I, I think at the minute, with the pandemic and stuff, I honestly think GW are trying to push more and more through their own sales channels. I think I think friendly local gaming stores are getting access to less and less of these box sets because GW know they can sell it, and if they sell it through their own shops, they'll make all of the profit as opposed to just some of the profit. And I think we're starting to see f- local gaming shops getting a little bit irate about the number of box sets that they're being allocated. And I don't see this being any different, if I'm honest. Um, let's have a look. Um, John saying, yeah, I've noticed other games companies' models creeping up in price, approaching GW standards. Yeah, I mean, I mean don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. There's a, like, the quality of other companies have gone up massively. Like, as an example, I was just reading today, so I've been painting up some of the ships for Dystopian Wars, and I didn't realise that War Cradle have spent, or they've invested, I should say, they've invested millions into UK plastic injection moulding facilities. So the plastics that they're producing with Dystopian Wars are now made in the UK. That is a big investment. And it wouldn't surprise me if we start to see their prices creeping up as well now, because not only have they got like a, a lot of money now invested in making their own sprues, they're also not getting them from China, where obviously like labour costs are a lot cheaper. They're not they're not relying upon Chinese production now. Um, other companies still rely a lot on on Chinese production. Malifaux gets their stuff made out in the Far East. M- uh, weird, um, not uh, sorry. Weird Games makes their stuff gets their stuff made in the Far East. Mantic gets their plastics made uh, sometimes out in the Far East as well. They get a little bit from Renedra in the UK, but predominantly it's kind of going to be Chinese production. Um, you've you've only really got companies like um, uh, Privateer Press who make all of their metals and resins in house, and uh, Cover's Belly make all of their metals and resins in in house. It's one of the reasons Mantic have gone to more. Resin, more resin products because they can make them in house now. They, they they have they have total control over them. It does mean, however, that resin products are now a little bit more expensive. Speaking speaking of resin, um, <laughs> there's Kirsten in as well. Nice to see you, Kirsten. Um, Mike Sprague says, "Just tuned in. Recap: Where did the three hundred dollar price come from? Yeah, it, it's kind of it, there's a rumor kind of doing the rounds online. It's completely unfounded at the minute. It's just speculation. Somebody said that they th- they have um, some kind of inside knowledge about it, but nothing's been proven, mate. Um, Luke Pryor, nice to see you, mate, as well. George is in as well. Nice to see you, George. I'll scroll down and say hello to a few more people as well. Tiberius says, let's all reflect on the fact that the cheapest way to play dwarfs in 28 mil is GW's Middle Earth range. Is it really? I can't, I can't imagine that's the case, mate. Um... Um, <laughs> Beauty said, is it worth paying an extra tenner for a red paint and handle? Uh, Palmsy said, fair enough, mate. I do take your point. All I'm seeing is a Marta starter is $100, and I'm sure they could have stuck a few more tokens in there and bumped it up to $129.99. I don't... I, um... Okay, so okay, so so let's as a comparison. I think what you get in the Amada box, so, so from a UK price, is, is what I what I'm kind of I have to kind of use the price comparison because that's where I can get my head around easily. I think we're seventy five pound. I think I think it was it was at the high end of probably what of what you what you would kind of be paying for the amount of stuff that was in there. But I think there was enough stuff in there, and the fact they were resin models kind of justified it. You got the rule book, um, you got like all of the card tokens and everything else. Do I think the acrylic tokens that they sell are a bit expensive? Yes. Do I think the acrylic bases that they sell are expensive? Yes, very. Uh, and personally, I wouldn't buy the acrylic bases. Um, so like, when it when it comes to value, if you saw the video I did about, uh, like they sent me a pack of the acrylic um, measuring tools and stuff. If you if you saw the video, I said I thought they were expensive. So, and and actually there was a bit of an error in the, in the length of the measuring stick. So I'm I'm not like I I'm not I, it's not that I don't criticize other companies it's just that when the when the price you're paying comes down like the the room for value comparisons become a lot smaller so if if it's if it's probably about 5 pound more than you wanted to pay you think ah oh, well it's only a fiver and I'll probably get some discount online if it's $100 or $200 more or 150 pound more or that you were willing to pay then that, that's a big deal. That, that's a lot to talk about. And that's the reason we have these conversations. Um, <laughs> Krabby's seeing any Space Marines in this Curse City box doubles the project t- projected sales, apparently. No, there's not, mate. And hopefully there's no Stormcast in there either. 
Um, Jared Harris is one thing we can all agree on. Heroes of the chapter is terrible value for money. Um, is Heroes of the chapter the little kind of um, like the kind of what they called like blind box blind box things? I think they were designed for the Chinese market, well, no, the Japanese market, I believe. Um, uh, Peter Cheltowski, hello, nice to see you in the chat, mate. It says, if you're forgetting about scalpers, they're going crazy during this pandemic. If GW stops giving kits to local gaming stores, scalpers will just buy everything and sell it for twice the original price. No, I don't. I don't think that's the case, mate. Basically, um, because let's let's say they make a thousand boxes of this, they'll they'll sell them through their shop, and what will happen is scalpers won't go to um, scalpers will make less money if they go to GW, uh, GW Direct. It, scalpers are going to friendly local gaming stores because they're already making twenty percent profit, even if they sell it for list price again, they're making twenty percent profit. Um, or they're making twenty percent more if you like. Is that right? Yeah. Um, so scalpers are going to scalpers are going to scalp if you like. The problem is with scalpers is scalpers are funded by people paying over the odds, and and that's that's when it becomes a bit of a moral conundrum. That basically um, is it at an inflated price. Is it still worth it to you? And at that point, that's the point where I think people need to vote with their wallets. If people didn't buy from scalpers, then scalp scalping wouldn't be a thing. If everybody refused to pay over the over the odds, if everybody refused to pay more than re um, recommended retail price, scalpers wouldn't exist. But it happens in PlayStation Fives. It happens in uh, concert tickets. It happens everywhere where there's limited supply of stuff. Um, Jared says, Heroes of the Chapter is the single sprue from Dark Imperium that sells for £45. I picked it up in Conquest for £8.99. I'm not familiar with that one, mate, to be fair. Um, Luke saying, also, a GW may have some high prices for their big boxes, starter boxes, indomitors, etc., but they tend to be a stunning value, so every chance it's 300 but a boatload of stuff. Yeah, it's kind of what I was saying in, in, in the main topic, mate, really, is that for that kind of money, it, it like it's not... I would I would assume... That if the if the price is correct, it's not it's gonna it's not gonna be a case of um, well it's the same amount of stuff you got in Blackstone Fortress, but it's twice the price. I can't see that like being a thing basically. Um, um, Palms is a Neil pilot says so. What's to stop the scalpers from snatching up the boxes and then rocketing the price up to a thousand bucks? There's absolutely nothing. Other than the fact that, um, one, it's a bigger investment. So if they're gonna if they're gonna lay out the money for this, they could get really stung because there's no there's no telling that this is limited. What what if this just continues to be a, a product that sits on the shelf in GW stores or in your local hobby shops? If they go and shell out three hundred dollars for this box and then can't sell it because it's widely available at a friendly local gaming store with twenty percent off, they're gonna get stuck with it, and that's that's the problem with this kind of stuff. That the, if people refuse to pay over the odds, then scalpers are basically out of pocket. They're three hundred dollars down for a product they, they never really wanted in the first place, so they end up having to just try and sell it at list price just to literally get their money back. So that's why that the more it costs to buy an individual box, the the bigger the risk is for a scalper. It's one thing kind of spending a hundred dollars on something and taking a bit of a punt on it, maybe buying two or three, um, but at the end of the day, is is anybody really going to pay a thousand dollars for it? Is anybody going to pay a thousand dollars for a three hundred dollar box set? Because if they are, then that then more fool them. To be fair, scalpers only scalpers are only a thing because people are willing to pay um, more than it's worth, and and that that's that's the that's the whole thing. Um, Kirsten says, Amada couldn't be any less given the production effort required. The acrylic stuff is very expensive to get it made in small quantities too. Yeah, and, that, and that's that's my entire point really, is that it's 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 not as simple to say that, um, like, things can be expensive, but they can be worth, like, like, they can just be, that's what they cost to make. However, from a consumer point of view, that might be still more than I, more than I want to pay. And that's the case across any miniature range it doesn't matter who makes it or what the game is if it's if it's a bit more than i want to spend it, it doesn't matter that, they, that those companies might be making tiny tiny margins on them but if i don't think it's worth it for me then I, then i won't spend it and, that, and that's the same for any game and for any company um 
Sunday Psych is saying for all our complaints about GW, we still buy, they still sell them, they're still one of the most popular brands in the market. Clearly, they're doing something right. This is my point. It's uh, like people will people will buy because people have the money to spend on it, and and those people obviously feel that they're getting the value for money for it, and that's why they that's why they're making huge profits because they've 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 set it up right. They, you know, from a purely from a business model. Ignore everything else that you think about them. Ignore the product. Ignore the quality. Ignore the prices. From a business model, they have set a price that the market is willing to pay. Um, Dan saying, I try to pre-order everything now because of the scalpers. I think that's where fear of missing out comes in, and I think that's probably one of the reasons why things sell better than probably they would normally is because people people have that fear of missing out. At the end of the day, if it's something I really want, I'll try and pre-order it. If it's not something I want, I'm not going to get caught up in the hype for it. Um, John saying Infinity Miniatures are fantastic but not for beginners the rule set is a little weird I've watched a bunch of battle reports and can't get my head around it it's funny because I, I did a, um, like a review of uh, Code 1 which is their kind of easier entry point for Infinity the miniatures are beautiful I don't find them too difficult the, the new ones have got some really nice kind of connection points they are metal which puts a lot of people off and actually the rules are not that difficult there's you, the, and I've said this in the review as well. It's essentially the, the rule book is written in a way of here are all the rules in the game. It's not a case of like, well, let me just kind of get you started with this kind of with this simplified version. It's just here's the rules, here's all the stats, here's all the weapons you can choose, uh, and then there's some kind of some difficult to pronounce, hence difficult to remember names for units and things, which makes it general, generally quite confusing. But actually, the rules themselves, once you actually sit and absorb them, they're pretty straightforward. Um, let's have a look. Lord, what was that one? Lord Maiden was just saying something there. No, he was a chat as the Imperium box lieutenant. Yeah, I, I'm still not familiar with him. Mate. Yeah. Andrew said, it's not the scalpers you have to watch for. It's those crazy kids who buy GME. Uh, Marcus says, GW is now actively going after scalpers on eBay. The thing is, though, it's, it's not illegal. The scalpers are not doing anything illegal. Because at the end of the day, what, what does a shop do? A shop buys the product from GW for, let's say, they, they pay £45 and they sell it to you at 100 So that's what the shop's doing. They're not The scalpers are not doing anything technically wrong. They're not doing technically anything illegal. They are buying the product. They are putting a profit margin on it for, for their time and their invested money, um, and then they are selling it at a profit. The reason that it happens is because people are willing to pay more than something is worth. Um, and if people didn't do it, then it wouldn't happen. The thing is with scalpers, GW are not really bothered about scalpers at the end of the day. If GW sell, sort of, if, if, if scalping actually creates a fear of missing out and people who don't even really want the, the box decide to buy it because, well, I don't I don't want to miss out. I don't want to think about this in six months' time and not be able to get it. Like, that's only good for their profits. I'm sure they're probably publicly saying they're trying to clamp down on scalpers, but but it, it is a legitimate sales transaction. They are selling a second-hand product. It's, they've paid the money for it. They're selling it on. It, it's I might not like it. I might not agree with it, but technically, there is nothing wrong with what they're doing. Um, let me... Uh, Phil saying it'll probably be one purchase per order, like Blood Bowl. Yeah, I would imagine if you're doing it through the through the GW website, that's probably exactly what will happen. We all know that their website is like, kind of like crash and burn when these kind of orders come through. <laughs> Busey says, I think we need fighting fantasy after this stream. With built-up tension, strength, and stamina, we could probably beat it. <laughs> to be honest, mate, I'm uh, uh, I need I need this kind of conversation to keep me awake after watching the the, the, um, blood, uh, the blood bowl the super bowl last night. Tiberius said scalpers gobbled up Dreadfleet. That's not the case, mate. There is there Dreadfleet was available everywhere and still is now. They did not buy it. There might have been a little bit of scalping at the start, but they all got burned because they didn't sell out and nobody nobody wanted it. So there is definitely no major issues with scalping. Uh, Luke, Luke Pryor, thank you very much for a donation there. He said, put it in the cursed code <laughs> piggy bank. <laughs> we'll see, mate, we'll see. Um, um, Luke says, the price tag actually excites me. For, I, needed for more than, I needed to be more than Silver Towers. I was not impressed with the fantasy uh, set. This 300 makes me think this might be something different. Yeah, like, like I said before, it, it's... If it's worth it, if it's worth the money, then I mean, I love the setting. It doesn't really matter how much the the the, the price is. I love the setting, irrespective of that. I love the setting. It's just whether the stuff that comes in the box is worth the price. 
Uh, just Kev said, I wa uh, just watched the video you referenced that shared the $300 price rumor. That guy was as believable as a flat earthed clickbait. Um, the, the video hadn't had that many hadn't had that many views to be fair so it wasn't really didn't really capture like kind of like sort of a huge audience or anything like that and um, it was somebody else who told me about it to be honest and when I was researching well where's this where's this price come from to talk about tonight or, or, or for, for a potential video idea for tonight I watched that video um and to be honest he's probably getting more views out of me sending people over to go and look at it now than he probably got from the original video to be fair so I think War Gamer Fritz has uh, War Gamer Fritz has been around for a long time, and I think he lost his channel at one point. He got he got hacked or something, um, and, and I think he's had to try and claw back from from zero subs again. But I think at one point he was quite a big channel. If it's the same guy, um, take it with a pinch of salt. I, I started this stream out, and I've said it all the way through. This is complete speculation. There is absolutely no firm evidence that that's the price, but. It, it, it's interesting to talk about because if it is true then we've kind of spitballed a loads of ideas and if it's not true then it, it all so much the better it, it's a cheaper game and more of us can afford it um <laughs> dan said if it's 300 it better have some big ass archways and not just doors yeah i do agree with that mate it wants to have some proper terrain if that's the case um Punk Rock Jazz Production Studio, hello, welcome to the chat. Says, if Curse City is $300, the game needs to look amazing on my dining room table. It needs to look like an actual human sacrifice is about to take place. <laughs> yeah, it, it, need, it needs, if it really is $300, it needs to have some bloody good stuff in the box. Um, George is saying, worth is in the mind of the buyer. I hate touts, but I can't. But if I can't get a ticket, I might buy from GW Price X is worth it in my head. Yeah, I agree, mate. I mean... I've done the same thing myself. So I've, um, I wanted to go to a boxing match. There was a big sort of like a big boxing match, uh, and I tried to get tickets for it, and the tickets sold out quick. So I looked online to see how much it would be to buy from a scalper, basically. And w when I figured in how much it was worth it to me to actually to go and see that boxing match that I wanted to go and see, it was still worth paying a little bit extra. So for me, that the 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 price that I paid. Um, was was still worth it to me to get a ticket to go and watch this big boxing match that I wanted to go and see. Um, and it's the same with these kind of things. Scalpers basically, scalpers basically get get paid by people who have lots of disposable income and actually don't mind the fact that they're paying over the odds. Unfortunately, it sounds like there are a lot of them. So, um, and, but yeah, worth is definitely in the mind of the buyer. As I mentioned in the main kind of like topic bit. It, price is subjective. Val sorry, price is is um, finite. Value and whether it's worth it to you is is subjective. Um, Kirsten said, "I wish Corvus Belly would switch to resin. The quality would be staggering and so much easier to build." I agree. I'm not a fan of metal minis. If I'm perfectly honest, I like the weight of them when I'm actually playing the game, but I'm not. I'm not really a fan of metal minis. I've, I've not built any in a while, and when I got some drowned earth stuff sent to me. It like all came like flooding back to me. The quality of the minis are beautiful, but the but the weight of the metal and having to pin stuff and having to sometimes having to counterweight the bases as well because they can be quite top heavy. That kind of stuff was just like oh god, yeah. I know why I like plastics and resins now. Uh, Walter says I'd just be happy if my friendly little game store can actually get this in stock. Not a single thing has come through since Brexit, and I want this box. Yeah, unfortunately, it's a bit of a... I think GW might be a bit different when it comes to Brexit. I know they've had some supply issues, but, um, yeah, the Brexit thing complicates things hugely. Um, Jared's saying there, at the end of the day, a product is worth what the consumer is willing to pay for it. 100%. I agree. It doesn't matter whether it's luxury goods. It doesn't matter whether it's a loaf of bread. Um, at the end of the day, something is only worth what somebody wants to pay for it. I could say to you, um, I, I want to sell <laughs> this glass of juice here, and I want £5,000 for it. Nobody is going to buy a £5,000 glass of juice, are they? It's just not worth it. it it's only worth what, some, what somebody is willing to pay for it. And when scalpers put a price online on eBay, whether it's PlayStation 5s or whether it's, um, whether it's GW box sets, if somebody is willing to pay that price then that's the price it's worth. That's the, that's the price it's worth to the person who's paying for it. If a scalper put, if a scalper buys this for $300 and tries to sell it for 600 
and they've still got it in two or three months' time, they'll be getting a bit squeaky bum about it because they're going to be stuck with this box set that they can't sell. And eventually the price will have to come down until somebody bites and goes, I'll go on and I don't, I don't mind paying 50 quid over the odds for it because I really wanted it and I couldn't get it. That's what happens. Um, Lord Main says, I, th I honestly think it's a combination of things. People may not realise how much goes into making things and having them shipped from the country of origin to the place you buy from. I think that's definitely the case. I think it's... Um, I don't know many other places, uh, many other industries, like in the, especially in the UK, because local like friendly gaming stores generally do somewhere be between ten and twenty percent discount. We almost factor it in as part of the price now. So every everything we buy when it comes to hobby, we expect a discount. I don't really know many places or many other kind of sort of sort of hobbies if you like or any other stuff where we, we just expect discounts all the time it happened for a while in like supermarkets where there was a like price wars between supermarkets and what happens is is something goes on offer like a two for one offer or something like that or kind of like buy one get one 50 percent off and people stock up at that point and when the product goes back to full price nobody buys it because they just go oh, no, i'll just i'll just wait until it goes on offer again next time like it used to happen a lot with things like Alton Park theme park tickets. Everybody just waits for like, like like the Cadbury's offers where you can get like sort of like buy one ticket, get one free. Nobody goes and pays full price for them. Everybody waits for these offers to come on. And, and, and it's interesting, like from a like a, a consumer perspective. I, I mean, they might be stuff. I'm just not aware of it. But I don't I don't know in many other like Lego doesn't really get discounted or anything, does it? Like there's not a lot of places where where there's just where there's an expectation of a discount on pretty much everything you buy. Um, Rob Forrester, hello Rob, how are you doing? Um, it says, I happily paid £95 for Blackstone, but will not pay for the two mini £65 Ascension set, but this seems to be the price direction. Yeah, I think that's a fair comment, mate. It, it, it's like I'm quite happy to pay for, um, as an example, I was quite happy to pay the £125 for the Indomitus box, um, uh, but but I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily want to go and pay not exactly the same thing i suppose like we mentioned before about the aos gargans the giant things I, i'd be happy to if i had an aos army i've got my i've got my um what they called again blood the ogre things more tribes or whatever they're called now um th oh, yeah <laughs> what are they called again the name's gone up my head now i've got my ogre i've got my ogre aos faction um like I, I, I wouldn't. I'd happily pay the money for that. There's no way I'd pay the hundred pound for one of those giants, even with twenty percent discount or fifteen percent discount. It's still not a value equation for me. I, I still don't see the value in it personally. Um, but that's that's everybody makes a choice. Loads of people bought them. Loads of people bought them. So some people do see the value in them. Um, Mark was saying they go after eBay accounts if they sell it before they receive it. Yes. Now that's different, mate. Some people do. What they do is they buy a pre-order. And then they list it on eBay before they physically have the product. GW can go after them for that because it's illegal to sell something you don't actually own. That's very different. Yeah, I agree with that one, mate. Um, Marcus says in the states, scalping is illegal. It's not. It's not illegal in the UK, mate. I mean, there's whole websites set up to sell tickets for concerts and stuff like that, and for sporting events where people buy a ticket and then sell it on. That's what, like, Seatwave is. That's what, um, is it called? Something GoGo? Indiegogo, I think it is. Something like that. There's, there's loads of sites, especially in the UK. It's not illegal to buy something and sell it for a profit. That's just capitalism. <laughs> that's that's what that is. Um, Phil says, Dark Elves, Blood Bowl, Dice on eBay, 90 quid. Now that's ripping the piss. But it's only, it's only taking the mech if you buy it. Then it's taking the mick out of the person that pays 90 quid for it. If it's still just sitting there unsold, it's irrelevant what the price is. This is this goes back to what I was talking about before. The price is only the price that people are willing to pay. Um, right, I'll skip ahead a bit here. Um, <laughs> Luke says, the reason I fell asleep was that disappointing Super Bowl. Yeah, it, certainly the last quarter, mate, wasn't great, was it? Um... Let's go up ahead a little bit. Crowley says, are the stores that sell bits actually worse than scalpers? No. I, do you know what it is, mate? I, at the end of the day, GW try to clamp down on breaking down the boxes and selling the bits separately. Um, 
I don't I don't think they're any worse than scalpers. I don't even think scalpers are that bad. At the end of the day, do I agree with what they're doing? No, no, I don't. But at the end of the day, if people are willing to pay the money, because there's there's a there's a train of thought that says all they're doing is they are changing the person that buys the game. So if I'm willing to pay £95 for a game and I can't buy it because a scalper's just bought the last copy and they sell it to, let's let's say you, Krabby, they sell it to you and you're willing to pay £150, then at the end of the day, that game has been produced and it's been sold to a gamer that's going to play it. Like, nobody's missed out. Like, 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 it still went to a gamer who wants to play the game. It's just that instead of it going to me, it went to you. And then the scalpers made a bit of money on the transaction. Technically, it's it, morally, it might sit a little bit uncomfortably, but technically and legally, they're not really doing anything bad. When it comes to the bit sellers, I guess it's a similar thing, really. I mean, I don't kid bash stuff, so I don't go looking for bits online. But at the end of the day, they only they can only they only make money out of buying a box set and breaking it down and selling it separately because there's a market for people that just want to buy certain bits. And at the end of the day, what what they what they have to be careful of is they don't get stuck with a load of stuff um, that basically that they can't use or the, uh, uh, that they, or they make a loss on it. I think the worry with it is, is when basically you, the amount of box games that you get sold online where it's like oh here's the board and the rule book and the tokens but there's no minis inside. That makes me a little bit sad that somebody hasn't had the chance to play that game, if you like, if it's been broken down in that way. But if, pe- if people want to buy bits and somebody wants to take the trouble to break them all down and list them on eBay and sell them and that kind of stuff, all power to them, really. That, that's just commerce. It's, it's As I said before, it's just what shops do. Shops buy from GW. They buy from Mantic. They buy from War Cradle. They buy at a reduced price. And then they put a profit margin on and they sell it to us. That, that in general that that is just the same the difference is is that gw have set a recommended retail price that that basically is well above what the shop pay games workshop for it that that's just that's commerce that that's how selling things work um kirsten says metal is so 90s it does feel like that when you're working with it it takes me back to like the first ever minis i ever bought uh, Bliss is the metal thing that's keeping me get, from getting Infinity. I'm really surprised they've not gone resin after all this time, I'll be honest. I really thought they would have done. Even just from a shipping perspective, keeping costs down and stuff like that. It's got to save them a fortune not shipping metal about. Um, Luxus, do we actually know when will, or when or will we know when the set is releasing? No, we don't. The only thing I would say is there's, a, like, there's 11 little kind of hidden characters on their website of they've shown they've shown three at the minute and i think they were kind of saying they were going to release one um like every week so we could be thinking probably a, a couple of months before we see it which would take us up in uh what's that uh, march april april may time end of april maybe it's into may wouldn't surprise me um jared says are you going to watch fury versus joshua can't wait for that one i i would have bought a ticket to go and see that fight if um if it was if if, it, if a pandemic wasn't on um I the, some of the fights I've been to see is I, I bought tickets twice to see uh, Fury versus um um David here and obviously both times the fight was cancelled I've been to see Carl Froch against um George Groves when it was in Manchester and I also went to see it at Wembley as well um I just I, I just I really enjoy boxing um. John said, I love this comment. At the end, it comes down to the old rule. If you want to rock and roll, you've got to pay the toll. 100%. That, 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 that just kind of like saved me like two hours of a live stream. That's exactly it. Marcus says, it would be good if they did a make to order for this set. Um, yeah, I, I'd agree. I, I think the problem they've got with this is, is because of all the delays and stuff like that, as I mentioned before. Um, I, I hope they don't underestimate how popular this will be. Um, and I hope there's enough to go around, and I hope everybody that wants one, who can afford one, whatever the price may be, gets gets the opportunity to buy it. I, what I don't want to see is this kind of like selling out in five minutes, never to be seen again. That that would be a real shame. But we all know that these box sets are designed to sell the miniatures. The game is almost an afterthought. Yes, it might be a great game, like Blackstone Fortress was a great game, like Silver Tower was a great game. But let's not get away from the fact that this company makes their money from selling plastic toy soldiers. 
and everything is around selling boxes of minis or, or selling terrain and stuff like that. <laughs> I love minis. I give you five pound for that glass of juice. Um, Andrew says, thankfully, really friendly with the local war, Warhammer manager. Yeah, I get. I how many people are friendly though? That's that's the thing. I mean, I mean, I'm sure he's I'm sure he's friendly with a lot of people. You might be more friendly though, to be fair. And Neil Pilot says, of course, it, no one will pay 5k for juice, but they will pay out, pay out for bathwater, though. That's because there's some very, very creepy people out there. Lord Technopants says, the value is the thing. It's the lesser man who only knows what something will sell for. Um, <laughs> uh, 5k for bathwater, who wants mine for 300? I'll do you a deal. Um... Johnson shops here rarely discount stuff. Most shops have store credit system where you earn money to spend in store based on a percentage of your purchase. So they're essentially giving you a, a, a discount, a loyalty discount, aren't they? Over here, pretty much any store, in order to compete with everybody else, um, they all give like some company, some shops give you twenty five percent discount on pre order weekends. Um, standard is twenty percent discount, and most places will at least give ten or fifteen percent. But um, yeah, like like I I have a, a, an affiliate link through Goblin Gaming in the UK. Goblin Gaming always do twenty percent discount on, uh, on GW stuff. So if this game is let's say it's a, it's a hundred, let's say it's two hundred quid for round numbers, they'll be selling it for a hundred and sixty quid because they'll do the they'll do the twenty uh, the twenty percent discount. Um, Lord Technopants is Lego and Nintendo games are generally top whack price everywhere unless there's a specific sale. Yeah, Le Lego and Ninten Nintendo will very rarely get discount for anything. I mean, to be fair, like, um, like even Sony stuff, even Sony games, like it's it's not you don't see big discounts. You might see two or three quid here and there. Like if a game's forty five pound, you might see somewhere selling it for like forty two or something. They're not huge discounts. They sometimes have sales, but then like N Nintendo have sales online as well. Uh, Jimmy Moscow says, I just picked up Warcry for Christmas, already have a Deptus Titanicus, Aeronautica Imperialis, 40k kill team, EOS, Necromon and Underworlds, I think I maxed out on GW games until a new battle, uh, Battlefleet Gothic. I think that's the thing as well, mate. Like, for me, this is exactly the kind of game that I want to play. It, it has all the aesthetic and theme of everything that I really like about miniature gaming. Um, it just depends on, it depends on whether it's, whether I can get my hands on it and whether I can afford to buy it. That's the difference. Um, um, where was this one about? <laughs> Peter, are you selling your bath water asking for a friend? <laughs> um, Luke says, I can't wait for a chance to meet up with someone and kick each other's toys in. Doesn't feel like it'll be too far away now. Yeah, don't... Uh, yeah, don't bank on it, mate. I think it'll be further away than you think. Um... Dirk says, they sold out at Salute within the first 30 minutes. What was that one about, Dirk? Let's have a look. The Cle Leon Clementine booster. Only $500. You see, that's another one. They, they were kicking around for a while, mate. They were kicking around for a while. Josh Hunter said, with scalping, the people who miss out are the ones with less money to pay scalp prices. It raises the price of admission. Easy to feel unfair. Yeah, I, and I do agree with that. I I do, I do agree with that. That the people, the people that miss out are the people that can't afford it. But generally, that like again, and I, I'm in that, I'm in that boat as well. I don't have the spare cash that I used to have when I when I kind of worked a nine to five job. Um, I get, I guess it's one of those things is that everybody has an well, in theory, everyone has an equal opportunity to purchase them. If you're online and you're in the queue and you get the chance to buy it with everybody else. And you miss out, then that's just unfortunate. Um, the problem comes is when, like, kind of, they're using sophisticated sort of um, scalping software to buy up multiple copies and stuff. So I do agree with that. Paul says there's a difference between doing something bad and doing something illegal. Scalping might not be illegal, but it is immoral, and I think people do miss out. Two hundred characters isn't enough. I, I I completely agree with me. I, I, and I said that before. I said that it, it it's not illegal. So like. It, but but it, it doesn't feel right. It feels immoral, and I don't agree with it. I, I'd ra I'd rather people just bas basically were allowed to buy what they wanted to buy. But when you have something that's in short supply, there will be people that will take advantage of that. But then that is exactly the same as what shops do too. They charge you more and make a profit 
on what they buy from their supplier. Like the price of products is is unbelievable, really, when you think about the whole supply chain. Like if something is made somewhere and then they sell it to a distributor, and then a distributor basically like to obviously transport it, take a profit out of it, and sell it to a, a third party, and then that then that third party then basically add on their profit as well and then sell it to you. There's lots of people making money down that chain, and the cost of that product is a minuscule part of the final selling price. Everybody else taking a cut out of it is what costs it up. Like I, I obviously used to work in an industry that's sold straight to supermarkets, and if you knew the the, the profit margins that super po- supermarkets are making on day-to-day goods versus the amount of profit that the companies that make the products make, you, you question the whole kind of thing, but supermarkets have so much power because if you don't sell it to a supermarket, who the hell else are you going to sell it to? Like, it's, like that, that's how this whole thing works, and that's where the whole thing gets a little bit a bit messy. Scalpers are just another another cog in that really, really long wheel of people taking money out of the system. Um, but... Uh, Walter Black says, I'm off for the night. Thanks for the show, and may all your rules be sixes. Thank you, Walter, and thank you so much for the donation. That is very, very kind of you. Um, Ted says, I'm finding it easier to resist GW stuff and gaming stuff in general, whilst I have no one to play against. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really key point. Somebody did bring up that this game is going to be solo, and, and that might create a bit more interest for it as well, or it's a, it can be played solo, I should I should um, clarify. So that, that might help with a few things as well. Um, Foible saying I'm really looking forward to this I'm putting my money aside I won't be disappointed if it was $300 If it has the content to match I reckon it's going to be about $125 I think me and you are in exactly the same boat mate Uh, The price is going to be the price To kind of to summarise everything I've talked about tonight The price will be the price Whatever it is As long as I can afford it As long as I can save up some money And put money aside for it And I think that it is worth the money that they're charging then I'll be all over this. That's, that's kind of the thing, really. Um, <laughs> John says, would Cursed City be worth a swimwear ad? No. <laughs> I wouldn't be doing swimwear ads for anybody. I mean, I, <laughs> my lockdown body is not worth selling it, that's for sure. Um, Agent Orange, nice to see you in, says, uh, VG Amorphous Scalper. The thing is, you can't, beat, you can't beat them, join them. So I'll be pre-ordering two of every set, one for me and one for friends and eBay. The problem with, with that is, mate, and, and to be fair, one thing that we, that we don't take into account, people that do scalping, like on a more, I don't want to say a professional level, but if they, if, if, if they kind of, they, they almost make an income out of it is, they are going to buy some stuff that does not go up in price. That does not raise its value. They're going to buy some duff games. They're taking a chance on Kickstarters, hoping that in two years' time, it's in really short supply. It's really kind of like it's a really sought-after game, and they can sell that on and make a profit from it. The problem is sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes the market is flooded with people who just didn't want, to, didn't like the game when it arrived, and they just want rid of it. They just want to recoup as much money as possible. So it, it works two ways. So you you have to be really really sure that what you're buying is going to be in short supply. Because in this instance, if GW just says, "Oh no, this is not just one and done. We're just going to keep producing this a bit like." Um, a bit like a 40k starter set. It's just always going to be available to buy for the next few years. Like Blackstone Fortress is still available to buy now. It went out of stock for a while, but it did come back later. Um, if that's the case, then scalp- scalpers have a very, very tiny window while it's out of stock to be able to move it on. And the amount of people that have more money to spend than it's worth and are willing to pay the premium just so they can have it now straight away or a small, they're a small percentage or a small audience. Um... Krabby says, I read a while back to make an exact copy of a pair of Levi jeans using the same manufacturing process. You would need less than $10 worth of material, but over 400000 worth of machinery. I tell you what, mate, making toilet rolls is very much like that. So, for example, like obviously, toilet rolls make their profit on the sheer like volume of stuff that they sell. Because like, you, you don't make a lot of money on one toilet roll, but like a production line will make about half a million rolls a day. And, and that's where you kind of... That, that's where you... Um, it's it's in, it's in the scale of stuff. However, it's not easy to just go and set up a toilet. It's not easy to go and set up a toilet roll factory and kind of like cash in on it, because a, a machine to make paper will probably cost you in the region of like seventeen, eighteen million pound, something like that. And then a production line, just one production line to convert that paper into toilet rolls, will probably cost you in the region of 
1.5 million pound like there's a there's a lot of money invested in stuff and this is the bit that people don't always get to see like like the whole thing with gw is the fact that, that all the production or, or majority of the production is in the uk they have like because they have so many staff they've got hr kind of like they have all those kind of like hr functions and kind of all them bits and pieces staff canteens and um profit share stuff and pension schemes and and all the stuff that comes with working for a big company a lot of that stuff isn't seen in a company that's got like three people working for it and just buy stuff in from china and we it's easy to overlook all the stuff the overheads and stuff that we don't see um because it like for it's not like for like comparisons across stuff um like marketing for example is very very expensive but but it works because if people don't know about your product um <laughs> then nobody's gonna buy it companies like gw like, like, like they do well like for example coca-cola spend an absolute fortune every year on marketing their product this can't they can't be anybody on earth who doesn't know about coca-cola but they still market the absolute life out of it because they want it front and center they want you to not forget about coca-cola um Dirk saying, uh, look into commodity futures existed for ages and they trade in food and stuff, artificially keeping the price high. Scalpers is no new for one. Look at this. <laughs> look at the whole thing with um, with um, GameStop recently. That's, that is just scalping in a different form. That, that is basically shorten the price of a, of a, of a share by, by panicking people into into thinking that they're not worth something, so, sell, so selling them quick. That's like, that, like short selling stock. It's just another way of scalping. Uh, Paul said, I'm not offering any solutions here, only comment on the morality of it and point out that people do miss out. Because people do miss out, but however, even without scalpers, people do miss out. If, if there's only a limited amount of product, there will always be people that miss out. So that, that's just the fact of life. I'm, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying I disagree with you, and I'm, and I'm not saying morally I, I, I agree with it either, but if there is only a limited amount of product, somebody will always miss out. It's just that the person that's missing out is the person with more money in their pocket at this point. Like, then then you get into the morality of us, well, well, why should somebody with more money get the opportunity? Or, or why should the person that doesn't have as much money, why should they get the opportunity? At the end of the day, if, if, it's, if it's a fair society and there's just a queuing system and first in the queue gets, gets the stuff, then that's as fair as you can be, really. Unfortunately, when it comes to e-commerce... Like, that's not how things work. We don't have, like, the Boxing Day sales where everybody goes and queues a day early to get a cheap sofa anymore. Um, Brandon says, are you sure about, um, Blackstone Fortress is still available? I'm in a Facebook group and can't get it. Or maybe they meant just expansions. It, it, if you go on the GW website, mate, you can buy it now. I'm pretty sure I was just looking this evening. I'm just going to um, very quickly look on my computer here while we're talking. But, yeah, when I was looking for prices, it was it was definitely still available, mate. Um, boxed Games, Warhammer Quest, Blackstone Fortress... Yeah, ninety-five quid, mate. It's still available, but but the expansions aren't. The expansions are all sold out. Um, Kirsten says someone once contacted Mantic to suggest that someone at Amazon was stealing Strider parts to sell them. Oh my sweet summer child, nobody is making money reselling Striders. <laughs> yes. Um, Agent Orange says to the guy with kids, don't buy it then or save up. If we get top quality, loads of content, and the best miniatures they can produce for 250 quid, so be it. It would need to be expensive and replayable. I don't know what the comment was about with something with kids. Somebody mentioned that earlier on um, about about having kids, and, and and that that's just life. I mean, we we all like we all kind of put these things into perspective. I've got kids, like, and um, you have to decide where your money goes. Like that that is just like. Somebody with no kids can probably afford to go on a very nice luxury foreign holiday. I can't afford to go on that same one because I've got kids to take with me. So they're like that's just where you kind of that's just life. Like there are opportunities for all of us to go out there and better ourselves or earn more money or whatever it is. Um, it's just what you choose to do. I chose to take doing something that I absolutely love. Um, but do it for a lot less money. That that's the choice I made, and if that means I can't buy s certain toys for my hobby, then so be it. That that's that's just life. Um, <laughs> John says we're all getting some education on economics this year. We absolutely are, mate. Lord Techno Pants says, what about Brexit pressure on the price of bacon sausage sauce, mate? I tell you what, mate. Is um, 
a Danish bacon, we might start to see some stuff. It depends. The sausages tend to get made in the UK, so I think we're all right with them ones. Warwick says, the problem with scalpers is the automated programs they tend to use to buy out limited quantities. Yeah, I agree with that, mate. The example being limited PS5s. To be honest, mate, I think they did everybody a favour with limited PS5s. There's been nothing worth but nothing worth playing on them yet. Um, and they're starting to come back into stock now. I, like, if those scalpers get stuffed with a load of PS5s that they can't sell because everybody's quite happy to wait until a decent game comes out, then, then it's the scalpers that got stung there. Anybody paying, like, a thousand pound for a PS5 wants their head examining. Um, Kirsten says, but you can sell the kids for medical experiments and buy Curse City. <laughs> do, you, do you know anybody here uh, buying kids? <laughs> uh, is it honestly, as old man says, we don't know what we're getting. Blackstone thought it was overcharged for expansions with one or two minis and cards for 30, 40 quid. Yeah, I, I think Blackstone thought his expansions were expensive, actually. And some of the stuff that was in them wasn't exactly like brand new stuff either. It was, it was stuff that had been recycled. Uh, do, do I, was I remembering right in that there was, there was one expansion that had like a load of. Um, what they called it was a plague bearers in them um yeah like and, and this comes back to what i was saying before as well about they are now selling an expansion to an already limited audience only people that bought blackstone fortress and then there are a lot of people who look at that and just go nah, i don't really want it so so that's why they bump up the price because they're just not selling them in the numbers that they need to get the price down blizzard saying you can get a lot of the blackstone fortress expansion on amazon I wonder whether they're overpriced. I wonder if that's scalpers. Um, <laughs> Dirk says you can put them in a pet shelter for the holidays. The pet shelters are more expensive than the bloody holidays, mate. There's there's scalpers for you. Lord Tetapan says, I've got no kids and no money anymore. Mind you, the mortgage is paid and I don't go to work. So th so you've made different choices than me, haven't you? Like, like you've made choices that means now that you're mortgage-free. Like So I, I made a choice to, to, to basically give up a very, very good salary so that I did not have the mental stress and kind of like the the just that horrible anxious feeling every single day of going to a job that I absolutely hated. Like I have never been happier than I am now. Am, am I sad it's happened in a pandemic? Of course I am. But I tell you what, if I'd been doing my old job in a pandemic, Lord knows what kind of place my my mental health would have been in. That's for sure. Um, Agent Orange is saying really when and charge you more versus upfront charge upfront how much do folks end up paying on 40k at least you know it's self-contained and you can play probably that's kind of where my head's at at least with this expansions are optional it's not like you have to buy this and then you have to buy an expansion it's not like they're going to suddenly sell a new rule book and the rules are going to change down the line what you get in that box is a complete box a complete game in a box that's the point I was making before about if you think it's worth it, it's worth it for you. That's that's exactly it. Um, Tony says, Kathy and I put our two kids on eBay. We didn't get any bids, though. <laughs> you, do you have to pay the, for somebody to take them? Um, Phil says, I got a text the other day saying my PS5 was being delivered and very nicely supplied a link for me to click. I don't think so. <laughs> Jared says, I'd like a Ferrari, but I have to compromise on a Golf. That's life. Classic car sellers are sell at inflated prices, but ultimately it's worth what someone is willing to pay. Exactly, mate. When you start getting into classic car territory, it's a completely different ball game. And it really is about like, well, there's only one left in the world. So if you want it, you're going to have to pay top dollar for it. But it's still only worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. I, I, like... I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I don't have lots of money, right? I, I'm not a person that can basically just buy whatever I want whenever I want it. I'm sure other people are, and I'm sure there are a lot of people worse off than I am, right? But I'm not. I'm not so kind of like. I'm not so stupid as to think that. Well, um, I deserve everything that everybody else can have. If something is expensive, I either need to work hard and earn more money. I either need to save up for it and wait. Or I need to accept that it's outside of my price range. And that doesn't matter whether it's cars. It doesn't matter whether it's holidays. It doesn't matter whether it's clothes. It doesn't matter whether it's a camera that I'd like for, for doing my job. It doesn't matter whether it's Games Workshop products. At the end of the day, like there seems to be this weird like thing online that happens whenever kind of a Games Workshop price comes up. Is that everybody thinks that it should be cheap enough for everybody to afford. And, and as I said earlier on in the, in the stream... Games Workshop and every other company, to be fair, have open in price points. They have games that you can buy that cost a lot less money. If you want to buy a, a game in a box, you, if you buy a 40k starter set, 
they don't cost very much money that's an entry point into a game if you want to buy sort of I don't know, Underworld's box set. That's a box in the game. You can just play with what's what in that. If you want to go to a different company and buy a different game that might cost a little bit less, there is price points for everybody. So if you want to play games, you have lots and lots of choices. If you want to play a very specific game and you want to buy very specific models, then you need to pay the price that they cost. That's, that is just how life works. Um... Um, Thordlum is saying price accurate or valued at 300 I, I guess you just come in Thordlum hello nice to see you it, it's pure speculation at the minute mate there's been some rumours online that somebody had a source that says that it, it had been leaked it was going to be $300 it's not confirmed so we've just kind of been talking about well if it, if it's right if the, if the rumours are right like well what does that mean what, what what does that mean for for what's in the box and stuff like that that's pretty much what we're talking about um, <laughs> John Ashley says, fair is a term best used to describe the weather, tone of skin, hair colour and country shows, not just as 100% mate, 100%. Um, how are we doing for time? Oh, we're just coming up to 11 o'clock. We've still got over 130 people in. Um, it's a good job I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm still going, I've been going on kind of a, on, on caffeine and energy at the minute, just to keep this going. I, I don't know if people just kind of come in, but I stayed up last night to watch the Super Bowl. I was up early this morning with my four-year-old son because his nursery's closed at the minute because of the pandemic stuff. So yeah, I was kind of like, I was falling asleep about four o'clock this afternoon. I was playing on the, on the rug in the living room um, with these little Batman Imagine X toys. And I went, oh, Dad just needs to have a little lie down for five minutes. And I, I could literally, I just wanted kind of like five minutes just to just to close my eyes. And I thought, geez, I'm going to drift off here. This is not what I need to be having to sleep in the afternoon. But yeah, I'm flagging now, I'll be honest. Um, Marcus is saying, yeah, my town is classic car town where loads of older people here that have old cars in states and conditions if you want a 50s junk out cart restore you might be in luck yeah evening mate uh, evening thordlum paul says i have to say i'm unconvinced the 300 dollars rumor simply because of what the game is it's supposed to be a board game and regardless of what's in the box 300 dollars is not very accessible it doesn't need to be accessible mate like look as, as i mentioned before about kickstarter games about how much they cost they don't need to be accessible as long as you've got an audience as long as you've got people who are willing to pay the money like look look at um Necromunda Dark Uprising as a box set, for example. Look at um what was it called? Adeptus Titanicus when it first came out. They don't have to be accessible to everybody. They just need to be accessible to somebody. And if there's enough people to pay the money for it, then that's fine. Like they're they're not trying to make a mass market game that like basically one of the problems they've got is they can't make enough to satisfy demand. This is what I was talking about earlier on. They can't make enough to satisfy demand because their production facilities are full. They're trying to expand their production facilities, but obviously they're, they're behind on that as well. So they're not in that state to do it yet. So the best way to get to make the most profit out of what you can sell is to kind of put the price up. And if like, So I, I don't think they're necessarily trying to make it accessible. It just needs to sell enough. Um... Gareth Lewis here, so to sum up the evening, capitalism. Yeah, pretty much, mate. We, li we live in a world where things cost money and some things cost more than others and not everybody has the same amount of money. If we lived in a, a like a, so a socialist world, um, a bit more, if, if we lived in communi communist UK, it would be a very different situation. Uh, well, Peter Nicholas says, capitalism over cannibalism any day. Brandon says, play Warcry on the tiles, double the game in value. There's £300 right there. Um, Luke says I got up two and a quarter hours with my kids after I got to bed in the Super Bowl it was nice to hang out online with mates and chat a game for the sake of being tight a day yeah I, I still enjoyed watching it to be honest it kind of took my mind off like of of being stuck in the house it, like, it brought back happy memories of sitting up late and watching the Super Bowl so I enjoyed it for what it was really um, Phil Campbell says night all great debate and stream night cheers I need to take care folks thank you Phil I also want to say thank you to everybody as well because the, these topics can get a little bit irate at times um, I, I, I genuinely go into these live streams because I, I love these kind of debates I love the fact that there are, there are always people in these live streams who know more than I do and I go into every conversation with the idea is that actually 
I, I want to learn something from this. I, I want to engage in a debate and a conversation with you lot because you will know things that I don't and I will know things that you don't. That's just how that's how life works. And that's how we learn and that's how we form opinions and it's how we change our minds and it's how we um it's how we become more educated really, just in general. So it's always would I love to sit and do this face to face? Absolutely I would love to sit and do this face to face, but this is the next best thing. And one thing about my live streams um, is that the community of people that come into these live streams generally, and I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, are very um, considered quite a sort of comments. There's no kind of like, there's no <laughs> anger from people. Nobody gets irate. Nobody starts shouting and swearing. Nobody starts kind of like being abusive. They, generally, like these, these kind of debates don't always go down very well in other places. But on these live streams, they always seem that like like it's nice to have we don't all we don't have to agree on everything. We it's nice to have disagreement sometimes because if we disagree, you have a different viewpoint to what I have, and I have a different viewpoint to you. And maybe maybe one of us has got the wrong information, or maybe one of us hasn't got it the right amount of information. I just find these really good streams. So I I, I want to say a thank you to everybody who's took part in the conversation tonight. It it's really it's been lively, but it's but it's been it's been a debate, it's been a conversation. It ha it hasn't been a slanging match, if you like. Ariel saying there, there's always a great and cheaper game from a smaller company out there willing to try out. 100% mate, 100% there is. Um, Mortis says, okay, as soon as my camera recharges, I'll take a picture of my Blood Knight conversion. It's about 80% done when I start painting. I look forward to it, mate. I look forward to it. Um, um, what was that one about? Kirsten says, I meant I bought Hellboy, but not the expansions, and I work at Mantic. Do you know what, Kirsten? I did exactly the same thing. I did buy the Kickstarter because um, because I really wanted it, but I'll be honest, I've not played the expansions that are in the Kickstarter yet, and I, have, and I haven't bought any of the expansions that came out afterwards because I haven't played all the stuff I've already got. Um, but it doesn't mean it's not a great game. It doesn't mean I didn't get value for money, but there's enough in that box for me until way down the line I might decide I want to buy something else. Uh, Ted says, cheers Andy, cracking job as always. I think that is a perfect space to kind of, to start to wrap this up a little bit. I mean, we've got what we've got. We've, we've still got, do people want to go on a little bit longer and chat about something else? Because we've still got like 128 people in or something like that. Let me know in the chat if you want me to go on a little bit longer. I'm all right. <laughs> My throat's a bit dry, but I've got a drink here. I'm all right to crack on a bit longer if people are happy to. Um, let's see what, uh, let's see what people see in the chat here while I get a quick drink. Um, John said, I, I buy more Mantic stuff that we're available in the shops here. I can't do the online purchasing thing. Don't ask why. Um, yeah, I, I think that's the same with most companies. Um, it's it's hard to get the stuff on shelves. Luckily, Mantic seem to be kind of expanding all the time and get, getting into more and more shops. But it's, especially in the current climate when shelf space is, is a premium, it's got to work hard. And a lot and a lot of that depends upon what your local community plays. <laughs> Palmsy said, let's have a meditation session. I was talking of meditation. I was watching a video the other day. I quite like Russell Brand. And uh, he was doing something the other day about um, about meditating. And what was it? It was like about centering yourself and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, kind of watching the thinking, why am I watching this? I've never done any meditation in my life. But it's strangely kind of like hypnotic. <laughs> um Gareth Lewis is saying, night all, good night, Gareth. Thank you very much for coming in. Lord Technopan says, can I go and get a beverage? You can, mate, but you need to get one for everyone. Uh, Luke says, is Brady the goat? I mean, it must be official now. I tell you what, love him or hate him, there's not been a better player, I don't think. He is, um, the fact that he can lead a team, like like Bruce, uh, Bruce Arians, um, was manager of the, of the Cardinals and never like, exactly set the world alight from there. Um, the the Tamp Tampa Bay Buccaneers have not done anything for a number of years. I know the kind of the stars align and everything comes together, but um, for Brady to basically kind of to come into there, it's more than what he does on the field. Like like you can like him, you can dislike him. It's more than what he does on the field. Like like Gronkowski coming out of retirement to come back and play. Like those kind of things, those partnerships, they're worth their weight in gold. Excuse me. Lord Maiden says, yeah, it was a great listen to. I love these discussions. Always allows me to consider my own views on things and allows me to see more views than just my own. I was thinking about this because when I, when I first found out that I thought this might be $300, my instant reaction was, oh, well, I'm out. That's, that's too much to spend. I'm not buying this. 
Like that would be stupid. And then I was thinking, well, that's probably not true anyway. So they don't, they don't even worry about it. And then I kind of just I took a step back and just thought about it and weighed it up. And that was at the point where I'm starting to think, well, you know what it is? If it's something I really want, and I still think it's worth it, um, why why wouldn't I save up and buy it? If if I if I can afford to do it, if I can afford to put a little bit of money aside, um, if I can afford to save up and buy it. Why wouldn't I buy something that I really want if I think it's good value? And that was when I kind of started to think about it differently. It was just that, that instant reaction of, that's too much money to spend, that's me out. And then, But then I'm thinking, bah, how can it be too much money? I don't even know what it is yet. It's like if somebody says to me, do you, want, do you want to buy this thing for 30 quid? And you go, oh, 30 quid, that's not bad. Like, that's, not, that's not a lot of money. I don't know, I don't know what it is. <laughs> like It could be an absolute fortune for a paperclip. <laughs> Um, Kirsten says, yeah, I mean, I haven't played Hellboy yet, so there's no point buying more, but I would pay more for Curse City up front. I think, yeah, like we said before, I, I, like, it's one of the reasons I've been put off Kickstarter, I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest, is I feel like I, I almost get coerced into buying expansions that I don't necessarily, that I'll probably never get around to playing. Um... Tasty Brain Drain says, I'm stuck at work as usual, so yes. We still got 120 people in, so I didn't scare too many off by uh, by saying Shadow, which I'm not. Peter says, leave some of that juice handy, I've got a bit in. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll fill it back up, mate, because my, my throat is dry as it sticks. James says, definitely up for a new topic. What's something you're excited to paint, stuff you have or otherwise? I'll be honest, mate. I'm kind of, at the minute... I'm feeling I'm feeling like like things are a bit dry at the minute like 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 the kind of like the future of stuff that's coming. Um, what am I excited to paint? Oh, I'm excited to paint the drowned earth stuff that I've already got. I've primed it all and it's all built and primed on nice like I've made some nice coke bases and stuff like that. I'm excited to kind of sit and paint that. Um, I'm just I think I think I'm missing playing games. To give me that little bit of inspiration and kind of like set the set the wheels turning about oh like, I, I'd love to do this or I'd love to get that army and play that game and I think I I'm finding it hard to almost like think outside the box and think that far ahead about like when I actually can play games what do I want to play so I'm not really sure I haven't played my uh, Knight Shadow Stalkers yet from Warcry. I'm looking forward to getting them. I think at the minute what, what's happening is I, I've got a load of stuff that I need to kind of record and make videos on, and that's dictating what I'm painting at the moment. Luckily, I only accept stuff that I'm interested in. So everything that I'm kind of getting the opportunity to paint, I'm interested in. It's not like I'm painting stuff that I have no absolute love for, if you like, but it just means it's um, I'm almost... I'm painting to get stuff completed as opposed to painting for enjoyment at the moment. So yeah, I'm not really sure, mate. What, what about yourself? Is there, is there anything you're looking forward to? Um, Barry says I was in the I was all I was in on the Hellboy Kickstarter, and believe it or not, we've played the expansions. I probably never got all those minis painted though. I started painting the minis at the start of lockdown. And I was determined I was going to finish them all. That just shows how those kind of things go to the plan. John says I'm sticking around if you keep going. Well, if, if as long as there's people watching, I'll kind of hang I'll hang around for a little bit longer until my throat gives out. I think my throat's getting dry, so we'll, we'll at least give it until another 10, 15 minutes, and we'll play it by ear anyway. Um, let's have a look. Um, where are we at there? Agent Orange saying, seriously, it's up to the individual. It's about content and quality. If it's the bee's knees, then charge more. Move the hobby forward. Top quality throughout makes it desirable. We'll save it. Yeah, I, I kind of, I, I'm kind, I kind of agree with you there. I mean, would I like to see it a bit less, a bit less expensive, so more people can afford it? Yes, I would, so more people get to experience it. However, if they're only going to make a limited number of copies, then it, it's kind of irrelevant how much the price is. The price is the price, and I'm sure it'll sell out. Uh, Dirk said, night night, it's midnight here. My eyes are telling me to have some rest. Take care. Lord Techno Pants says, the multi bars are on me. Good night, Dirk. Take care, mate. Peter says, 10 Super Bowls, 7 wins. Come on. Yeah, I agree, mate. Um, winning Super Bowl with two different teams. Um, but you've got, you've got the most completed passes now in a Super Bowl. Um, yeah, I, I think he's the greatest. Um, yeah, and he's 43 years old. God, does that make me feel old at 45? <laughs> what he's doing at 43. Uh, Danny Boy, Danny the Boy says, Hi there, how many chances it's a co-op game? There's a 100% chance, mate. I think they've already said it's going to be co-op. So it's it's uh, it's a cooperative game, 
but because it's co-op you can also play it solo as well so yeah i'm 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 like 99.9 percent .9 sure that it's uh, it, that they've already said that warwick says have a good rest for, rest of your night andy great stream wednesday during the stream i'll build some necromunda models i think nice one mate i'll see you one way wednesday at the hobby hangout that goes for everybody as well if there's anybody else here it's maybe it's your first time here every monday night i do these live streams and we have a different topic each week and we talk about stuff uh, and then on a wednesday i do a, a live stream as well where it's a hobby hangout i sit and i kind of just paint some models and we just we chat about what's happening Sometimes in miniature gaming, sometimes about what's happening in the, the quality of the bacon sandwiches at my local cafe. It's a bit of a, a bit of a ramble one, a bit of a hobby hangout. And we just we sit and chat like a community. And then during the week as well, I do other videos. So if you're not already a subscriber, uh, please do consider subscribing to the channel and, uh, and coming hanging out with us. Um, VG says, if anyone saw my post, the Street Fighter Kickstarter on Discord, you know I'm very susceptible to paying over the odds of what should for how much I get. The Street Fighter one, mate, I, I don't know how much it was and I don't know how much you got. I only saw the, the sealed boxes. I haven't seen what was inside. Um, but those kind of things are nice just as, like, models, like, because they come pre-painted, don't they? They come fully painted. So they're nice just to have on, like, shelves as, like, and stuff. Like, people pay a fortune. Like, that that Thor that I've got there was a, was a Christmas gift from my brother and sister-in-law. I can't remember how much they are, but, um, like... It's it just sits on there. It's just nice to look at, kind of thing. The same with the same with the helmet. I mean, that helmet was probably about about one hundred and thirty quid, something like that. It just sits on the shelf, like it doesn't do anything. I can't I can't wear it. Like it just it just sits on the shelf, but it means something to me, kind of thing. Um, uh, Rob says I think part of this is the fact GW stopped making sets. Scalpers know that it'll be unavailable and cash on the internet. I really wanted Loon Curse. Stocks were gone in a couple of days. The thing with this, Rob, is, is, is I, do, I don't think it's always obvious which things are going to be kind of like limited supply. Like we were talking about Blackstone Fortress before. You can still buy that now. Like Necromunda Dark Uprising we were talking about before. You can still buy that now. Um, Like Silver Tower never like, never sold out instantly. I mean, it was back in the day before things were like, <laughs> like, like hotcakes. Um. I think it depends. I think it really does depend sometimes. I mean, will I be if if it's all I hope it will be and I can afford it? Will I be will I be pre-ordering this day one? Absolutely, I will be because I, I want to play it, but not because I'm fearing of missing out. Just because if I want it, then why why wouldn't why wouldn't I buy a day one kind of thing? Um, I hope I hope it is available for a long time. I hope I hope they reprint it and and there's enough to go around. But I know what you mean. There's a lot of those kind. Of, there's a lot of those kind of. Um, sort of limited boxes the problem is people people feel that they have to buy everything because there's a fear of missing out and i think that's half the bother like they've almost people have driven themselves into buying things that actually they don't really want like how many people buy those sets then they just sit on the shelf and don't do anything with them so sometimes we have to kind of ask ourselves those questions as well uh, John says, got dinner in the oven, potatoes on the range top, veggies standing by waiting to be microwaved. Live stream dinner conversation, my wife and daughter. Well, <laughs> John, my apologies to your family. Um, uh, Lord Minson, I thought about it when I heard the other YouTuber and come to similar conclusions. I also think I'll wait and see what's in the box. More first before coming to a full conclusion. Yeah, I'm sure in the next few weeks we'll start to see more. Um, they always do. At some point, they'll probably have another reveal uh, weekend thing, and we'll see more in the box. But you, you will certainly know exactly everything that's in the box, uh, and we'll we'll have the opportunity to find out the price before you are forced into kind of making a purchase. You'll never, you'll never have to kind of purchase it blind, like not knowing what it costs and what's inside. That's one good thing with GW stuff. Um, Colton says, last Kickstarter I did was Zombieside Set Edition, and it's probably the last one for a while, because investing $140, and it's over a year later, and it's now starting to get shipped. Yeah, it's funny, mate, isn't it? I mean, they are such a... They are such a long way away, aren't they, like, with Kickstarters? I mean, I, I've waited, like... The last one I did was uh, Mythic Games. It was Super, Super Fantasy Brawl. And that was a bit delayed, and, and I just felt like my money was tied up and forgotten about, really. Uh, Battle Knights, hello, mate. How are you doing? He said, I'm pretty tempted by Parabellum First Blood Game. Parabellum sent me a starter box for Conquest, I'll be honest. And the minis were a bit of a pain to put together. The scale of them is just kind of... It's, they're too far off to be used in any other games. Um, and some of the stuff in the rules... 
I felt like it was just being different for the sake of being different, um, which made it a bit confusing in places. It's not something that I really kind of, um, that I personally really liked. And for that reason, that their, their skirmish game, their first blood game, doesn't really interest me that much either, if I'm perfectly honest. They're getting a lot of push online. Obviously, they've, they've obviously signed a deal with their Beast of War, um, and it's it's all over there at the minute. So that's that's their main source of marketing at the minute. So it's getting pushed all over the place. But um, yeah, I, I don't I don't think it's for me. I, I I wait and see more information on it. I, I don't know a lot about the skirmish version, but the full scale game, um, the conquest, not not really my kind of thing. Uh, Josh Hunter says, you all seen the new Rumble Slam stuff? TT Combat really stand up their sculpts? I've not seen the new Rumble Slam stuff, mate, but to be fair, TT Combat sculpts for the original Rumble Slam and, and second edition one were pretty good anyway, actually. I always thought they were quite quite good um, resin sculpts. Um, but yeah, I'll be honest, I've not seen the new stuff. Um, where were we up to there? Um, James says, what percentage of models at GW Cell do you think get played with? What percent fully painted? What percent get built? Do you know what? This this has always been my my thing, mate. I think people would be 100% blown away when they, when they, if they actually knew the truth. I think, like, whoops, I, I think it's like, it's it's a, <laughs> it's a almost tiny amount of models that ever see the table. Uh, and I'd be surprised how many actually get painted. I know how many I've got still like, left lying around in sprues. In sprues on boxes and stuff like that, it's um. I think people think that they need to have everything, and then basically once they've got them, they're already looking at the next thing that they think that they need to have. Um, there there are too many models get bought and never have anything done with them. Um, even people who pay scalp prices pay over the odds for them, and then they sit on the shelf and don't do anything with them. Bodyguard of Lies says, I've been a salesman most of my working life and I can't fathom games workshops, market and department. They may be brilliant or terrible, but as a customer, I guarantee they are frustrating. Um, I think, purely, for, purely from a marketing perspective, I, th I think they do a fantastic job. They, um, they know how to hype a game up so that it basically sells. Like, if they didn't do a great job, they'd... They'd have they'd have loads of stock left in a warehouse, wouldn't they? They'd, they'd have loads of stock left on the shelves. So from that perspective, I think they do a great job. Could they do a better job? Could they manage communication better? Could they manage expectations better? A hundred percent. But I'm not sure if that's marketing or if that's a communications team. Uh, I think this is what happens when you get into bigger companies, and, and these companies don't these people don't always talk to each other properly. It's a bit different when you've got a company and everybody's based in one office. But um, but. In general, the fact that they sell everything they make pretty much suggests that their marketing team are doing something right. Um, Vijay says, as, as for what I paid for it, I haven't added it up with expansions and shipping, etc. Fr frankly, I'm a little scared. <laughs> That's what happens with um, <laughs> with Kickstarters. You forget how much you spent. I know when I bought Super Fantasy Bro, like I, I, I added on the, the bag, which I can see in the corner of the room there. Um, the shipping was more expensive than I expected it to be. Um, I, I, I don't even want to think about what I, what I spent on it. Jamie said, if you really want it, just start setting hobby cash off to the side. I'm currently saving for the new big bad for Adeptus Titanicus Warmaster Titan. God knows what it will rub me for. Can't wait. I do have a um I do have a bit of like a hobby savings pop, to be fair. And if, if it is three hundred pounds uh, it's not three hundred dollars. Uh, sorry, it's not gonna be three hundred pounds. Let's say it is three hundred dollars and it's a hundred what did I say it would be? A hundred and um roughly about a hundred and eighty quid, we're saying. Like I've got a little pot I put aside. That's my like my hobby stuff. I haven't really spent much recently. I bought some Malifaux stuff a little while ago. I'm really fortunate that a lot of stuff gets sent to me. It's not always stuff I would buy myself, so it's not like my hobbies paid for kind of thing. But um, but I do have like a little savings pot where I put a little bit of money aside, like um, just to kind of to to build it up when there's something that I really want. Um, so yeah. Can I afford to buy it if it's if it's worth the money? Yeah, I probably can to be fair. But it's but it's not like it's a it's not like it's it's not like it's um a, a decision that I take lightly. Let's put it that way. Um, Battle says, yeah, the scale bugs me too. As I like to use my figures in other games, but I'm still tempted. I don't know much about the game itself, mate. But um, the the models themselves are um 
they're nice, but they're not like they're nothing special. Do you know what I mean? Like they're they they just they're just nice. They're all right. Like that there's there's better sculpts out there. There's there's better plastics out there. Um, I don't know how much they cost. I've never really looked into them that much to see whether they're kind of like bargain price or anything like that. I, I hear good things about the game. I just don't think it's my kind of thing. But like I say, I, d I don't know much about the skirmish version. Um, Mike G says, sorry I'm late. Had to do the shopping. Uh, welcome, Mike G. Hope you're well, mate. Luke says, the Rumble Slam minis keep getting better and better. Yeah, I remember the first one's not being bad. I, I've got the first like the first set stuff um, and painted all those up, and I quite like them. John says, Conquest, the last argument of Kins, cool minis, but weird skill. I bought one of the hero models. He went together nicely, but he's still in progress. Yeah, like, like in the starter set, like, there's there's guys like knights riding the horses and stuff. And they're beautiful minis. They'll be, they'll be nice to paint and stuff. But like, you couldn't use them in Kings of War. You couldn't use them in Warhammer. Like this, The scale is, is really... like It's nice to have something a bit bigger. I heard a rumour, and I have no idea how much this is true, but the reason that the scale is off with everything else is because somebody resized the masters incorrectly. Um, now, I don't know how far that's true, but if they said, right, they, these are the three up stuff or whatever, these are the designs, the digital designs, um, right, they need reducing for, like, by 45% for final production, uh, and there was a, an error somewhere. And I don't know how far that's true, but that was, that was the story I heard about why the scale is off. Because I can't imagine you'd intentionally like make something so much bigger than everything else. One, it costs you more money in plastic. Um, and two, you don't even get the opportunity to sell your minis to, for like for like other games. So no idea how much that's true, but it's a good story if it is. Um Tony says we're sh um oh what was that one? You sure are, but one of our 60 plus people makes me feel old. He's such a big kid, has so much enthusiasm. Uh, ben, Bren, uh, Bren B, hello Bren. He says, companies like Warlord and Grip and Beast are now producing smaller scales. What's your take on 15 mil, 10 mil and smaller and the Warmaster re-release? Uh, hello Bren, by the way. I'm not a big fan of the smaller scales. I know lots of people are. Um, I'm getting old. My eyesight's not what it used to be. Um, and I just... Part of the enjoyment for me is is painting the minis and actually seeing all of that detail and and like having them on a like like on display and stuff like that. Um, and for me, fifteen mil and ten mil is is just a little bit too small for me to aesthetically be impressed by them. The only time I think it becomes impressive is when you've got these huge big armies on a table, and that's the kind of thing where I'd walk around salute and go like, "Oh wow, that looks really nice." I'd never paint all that, but it looks really nice. So I can appreciate it, and I appreciate the time and attention that people spend on them. But for me personally, like anything smaller than twenty-eight mil, and I, I kind of lose interest. To be fair. Um. John said, "Now nah, bread, pork, schnitzel, baked rather than fried tonight." Nice. Um. Bodyguard Elias, they could support their products better. Take Kill Team as an example. Kill Team's a bit of an outlier for me. I, like I've been massively disappointed with how they've supported Kill Team. I think how they've supported Warcry is almost like is a blueprint really for what they should have done for Kill Team. And I've said this loads of times. There's loads of stuff they can learn from Warcry for Kill Team. Um, I'm really surprised that they haven't done a better job of it. And unfortunately, with this new Pariah Nexus thing that's coming out, it looks like they're going to treat it exactly the same. They're basically treating it as a way to shift new models for 40k like they just they're almost treating these kill team boxes the way they treat these like you know these these two two like kind of army boxes like um like feast and uh, feast of bones and stuff like that and loon curse and stuff they're almost treating this kill team box a bit like that um where are we up to? Mark was saying, let's also remember GW never discounts beyond the 20%. That's impressive. GW never discounts. They, they never do any discount at all, mate. Um, it's it's all of the retailers that do the discounts. Um, so it, from a purely from a business point of view, it is impressive. In the same way, Apple don't really do discounts. Apart from they might sometimes do like a Black Friday sale where... Like, you, you get an £80 voucher if you spend £800 or something like that. But Apple are another company who do that really well. Keep their prices high um, and, and basically, like, sort of reap, reap the benefits of it. Um, James is saying, they all got to meet in 9 or 11. I'll be knackered, but I can probably get some models built. Nightmare, thanks for coming in. Um, 
John says he's about to hit the table. Menton Matthews, the third, he says, where is the source of the information? It's going to be $300. I mentioned this earlier on, mate. There's a um, there's a number of YouTube channels and um, stuff online where people have been talking about it. I think the, the original source of the information was a channel called Wargamer Fritz who suggested he had a source who had told him this. Um, I've, as I've said all the way through this stream tonight, it's purely just speculation. Uh, nothing's being confirmed. I'm not even sure I believe it. But the stream tonight was really about, let, well, let's assume it's correct and, and, and then let's discuss what does that mean for, for Cursed City. Um, if, you, if I was a betting man, do I think it's $300? Probably not. I think we're going to see nearer about maybe two hundred dollars, hundred and twenty-five quid, something like that. I'd imagine, but um, yeah, that's so that's where it come from. Um, Battle Nice says, "You know that game I showed you at Expo two years ago? It's been picked up by a publisher. Amazing, mate! That is fantastic. I really enjoyed playing that game. You'll have to let me know if if it's changed its name or whatever, or when it's coming out. I'd love to pick that up, mate. Thank you very much for telling me. Um, yeah, it was an awesome game, mate. Congrats on that." Um, let's have a look Mike G says Conquest really isn't for me but Parabellum is really doubling down with the skirmish game and a new faction as well there's tons of new units for what they already have coming out soon Parabellum are a funny company in the fact that they don't really have any history in making games they've sunk a lot of money into like a lot of tooling and plastics like they spent a fortune up front before they even had anything to sell um, and I think the company that owns Parabellum, like, own, like, lots of, um, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, um, like, buildings, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, like, investment, like, like, um, oh, like, like, building investment firms, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, yeah, I can't even think. I quite my, my head my head's a shed as they say. They ba they basically they have lots of investments in uh, uh, in um, in buildings. Oh, God, I can't even think what the words are. Uh, they're a big company with lots of money basically, and and, it, and it's almost like it, it feels like somebody's toy project type thing. Um, I think they've I think they've basically doubled down and went to a, a, a skirmish version because people are just not playing conquest. I think they're realizing that certainly in the current climate. Like big six by four games, like big fantasy games. There's too much competition. They need to kind of come in and try and pick people up through the skirmish game and bring them into the bigger game. I think they um, they got they got Alessio Cavatori to write the rules for for, uh, for Conquest. I thought I might kind of like the game. I've had a few demos of it. I've read through the rule book as well. And like I say, I think there's just some things that feel like they're different for the sake of being different. For me, um, Kings of War fits everything I need from that kind of rank and file game or rank and flank game um, and it would take something really sort of special for me to want to play something like different at that scale like at, at that big because it's a big investment to paint up a big army like that um, and especially when these models are a bit bigger anyway um, I, I like the, the diorama aspect of Kings of War I love the fact that I can just build like a diorama type thing to push around um, so yeah, I don't. I, I just don't feel the pull from conquest. Um, Luke says conquest just looked like another fantasy game to me. Nothing other than the scale made it stand out. Yeah, and, and even that, it, it kind of stood out for all the wrong reasons. What I would say is when I've saw when I've seen them at conventions and stuff, they have some beautiful kind of like display tables and stuff. They're really like really nicely painted. They have like nice stands. They've obviously spent a lot of money on getting that kind of like the display right. It looks fantastic, but like my, my game won't look like that. That's for sure. Uh, John says small minis. I love painting small stuff. Paint small, game big. Uh, Scott says I'm buying BattleTech for my next game. Hello, Scott. By the way, yeah, BattleTech's not something that's interested me. Uh, Rob saying I got the jaws of the lion was so sad when I saw the size and quality of the minis too small to paint spoiled by GW it's funny that mate isn't it like it's I've got a load of Joan of Arc stuff and the idea of there's so much stuff in them boxes the idea of painting it all and the fact that they're a smaller scale just makes me think like oh I'm just quite happy with them just being bare plastic if I ever do play it um 
Tony must be having a conversation with somebody there. How are you doing, Tony, tonight, by the way? You're all right, mate. Uh, Lord Tetapan says, I'm still glad I got the OG Kill Team box, but the upcoming Necron box is a pass for me. Yeah, I got the original one, mate, as well, and I'm, I'm really happy I did. Um, but yeah, the, the new one's not something I feel any kind of pull for. Peter said, it struck me as odd the GW let Kill Team rot almost. They're always trying to start a 40k skirmish game. I feel like Kill Team's almost like... They all, I think it's, it's almost like they wish they had they didn't have it. So it's, they don't want to kill it off, but they almost wish that they, did, they didn't have it to have to maintain. Because I think what they've done with 9th edition is they've brought in Combat Patrol, which essentially is skirmish 40k now. Uh, venture Capitalists... I th I th not, it wasn't Venture Capitalists, mate, although I think they are Venture Capitalists as well. Um... The, the idea, like property, like property. I think I'm making the word like the investment in property, like the property investors. I think that's the word I was looking for, mate. <laughs> Real estate. That might have been it as well. Thank you very much. Real estate investment. But I think, like on a big scale, like they invest in like hotels and like kind of like apartment blocks. I think it's that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, Luke's in late night Super Bowl just broke under you. You're not wrong, mate. Yeah. Um, Uh, John says a bigger scale for mass battle game doesn't make much sense. Otherwise, you're only going to need bigger tables. Yeah, or, or you'll have less minis on the table as well, which then doesn't look as impressive as like the big battle. Uh, it just for for me, it's some of the models look nice, and I like the fact that they've went to the trouble of creating a whole universe for it and a whole world for it. Um, the problem I I see is that any coverage online is kind of paid for. And it, and it just puts a bit of a false, uh, a bit of a false spin a little bit for me. Um, VG says I got the monumental kickstart. I, f I feel like you do about Joan of Arc. <laughs> yes, so much plastic, nice minis, but have zero motivation to paint them. To be honest, I, I'm quite, ha I'd quite happily consider selling all the Joan of Arc stuff. Um, AD says box sets are better value, so they kind of do discount a different way. Yeah, I agree, mate. Um, hello, by the way. They, they they tend to be better value, so that they they almost discount them artificially. It's not like should be two hundred dollars now one hundred and fifty. It's like you get two hundred and two hundred dollars of individual models for one hundred and fifty. That's kind of the way it is. Uh, <laughs> Grass Widow says, uh, not interested in Battletech heresy. I'm just not into that kind of like um, fighting robot thing. It's not It's not really my thing, to be fair. And I've heard Battletech is just really crunchy as well. Like, there's a lot of rules to it. Unless you're buying like, the Battletech light version, whatever that's called. It's not my kind of thing. Um, um, VG says, I'm not really sure I want it. I also got the expansion. Maybe we can work something out, Lou Pryor. Oh, that was something else. Good, I missed out on Monumental twice. Um, um, Kirsten says, I mean, you'd hope mechs would be crunchy. Soft robots are really stupid. I mean the rules, of course, Kirsten. Um, yeah, I, I think it's... I think, like, a de like, when you're starting to, like, sort of talk about different, like, the cortex and the left arm and the right arm and, like, like this has took this much damage, it, it, it ends up being more like a, a course in bookkeeping as opposed to... Uh, like just playing for fun. I, I'm. You all know me. I, I'm. I'm much more about the simplified rule sets, and um, that I can just enjoy the game rather than having to try and remember a million rules. That's just my stuff. Anyway, folks, I did manage to go until um, eleven thirty-six tonight. I'm flagging now. There's still over a hundred, hundred and ten people in the chat tonight. We've had a great number tonight, folks. Um, I think it peaked out. Let me have a look at that. Does, does it show me what our peak peak number was? I think it peaked at about two hundred and. 226 I think something like about, oh sorry about, about 207 I think it was 213 I think the maximum we had it tonight was 213 at, at the peak of the video so yeah a bit of a um a bit of a lively one tonight but I really appreciate it folks um here's where it comes here John saying I love the I love the battle tech models since they were introduced but the game should have been titled accountant tech too much record keeping that's exactly what I, I know about it Kirsten said I like crunchy rules but I only want that titanic of scale not really tiny battle tech I'm not a fan of crunchy rules I, I, my, I only have a brain big enough to remember so many different things at once and because I play a lot of different games I, I like streamlined stuff that's just my brain uh, Lord Tech the Pants says uh, <laughs> And uh, night all for the thanks for the banter. Great to be here live for once. Thanks for coming in, mate. Always appreciate your comments. Um, everyone having a chat there. Blizzard is saying smash that like button. How have we done for likes tonight? 126. 
That's not bad. Can we? we can, there's still 110 people in the chat. Can we push those likes up a little bit before you go, folks? Um, what I will say, folks, is if you haven't seen uh, the video I did last night for painting up the ships, uh, a really simple way to paint up the ships for, um, what's it called again? I can see it. It's in the corner of the room. <laughs> Dystopian Wars. My brain is fried. But Dystopian Wars, please do check it out. Um, it really does help the channel out. If you just kind of, uh, if you if you check those stuff out, even if it's not for you, you might pick up some ideas for kind of painting um, other other ships or other ship games, like Amada, for example. Um, if uh, Christian Shen, I think there for the Patreon as well. There, I am. I am. I do this full time. This is my job. I'm supported by the community. Being supported by the community means that I get to cover and talk about all the things that are not necessarily mainstream. Tonight was a bit more mainstream. You can see what talking mainstream does for the for the view count for stuff. I've got no doubt that tomorrow's video, when I do the clips bit, it'll do okay as well. But I don't always like to talk about the mainstream stuff. I like to talk about the smaller games. I like to talk about the kind of the softer side of what we do, the hobby and motivation and that kind of stuff. And and, and that just doesn't pay the bills on the basis of clicks. So um, that's why the support from the Patreon group and the support from donations is 100% not only needed, but hugely, hugely appreciated. So if you are interested in joining the Patreon and, and keeping this channel alive for the future, there's not many channels get the chance to, to do this full time. Um, but I've got a really, really wonderful community of people who kind of who kind of believe in wanting to see something a little bit different on YouTube, and they and they back me to do that. If you want to join those folks, two dollars a month gets you into access into the Patreon uh, Discord group, which is kind of like the chat in here tonight, and it's like that all the time. Um, it's like that twenty four hours a day, just random chat. So if you want to join just for the Patreon chat. Two dollars a month, and you can get get in and do that. There's obviously other levels after that. Five dollars a month gets you your names at the end of the videos and some extra bits and pieces. Gets you discount off merch. Um, Ten dollars a month gets you t-shirt. Uh, gets you a, um, a free mug every six months as well. And twenty dollars a month gets you a free Patreon exclusive t-shirt as well every six months. Um, and I've literally uh, this week I've I've just I've caught up with my backlog of admin stuff. So all the t-shirts are going out. All the mugs have gone out. People are starting to get them as well at the minute. So yes, if you if if you want to support the channel, or support me, keep it going for the long term for the future. I really appreciate you checking that out. I'll just keep knocking the mic there as well. I'll say uh, goodbye to a few people as well. Marcus says downvoter wouldn't be the same without a downvoter, mate. I expect to get a lot more downvotes on this one. I expect to get loads of comments going clickbait. You just clicked. You just pulled me in with clickbait. It's not even the price. That's why. There's, that's why there's a big question mark next to it. Um. <laughs> VG says agreed on accountant tech. Yes. Uh Jack saying goodbye bye to him. Bye Rat Hammer. Um bye Tissy Brain Drain. Goodbye to John. He said he'd been nominated for a medal for dinner. Um Peter says coming back from a sickie. This was a long, albeit great life. Thank you, mate. Um see you, Luke. See you. Kirsten said the softer side. We're back to squashy bots. <laughs> Hope lives. Uh, cheers, cheers, Andy Gristine. Thank you very much. Bye AD. Who else we got? Bye John. Bye VJ. Bye Grass. Uh, Grass Widow, um, I think that's everyone. So, folks, I will see you on Wednesday for the Hobby Hangout. Goodbye, see you then. Thanks for watching my video. I hope that you really enjoyed it. And if you did, why not consider clicking on the suggested video below to see more of the work that I've done. If you'd like to support the long-term sustainability of this channel, why not consider checking out my Patreon, where you can pledge and support from as little as $2 a month and there is lots of different tiers and bonuses which will give you access to a private discord server it will give you free t-shirts free mugs a podcast every month and a number of other things including getting your name at the end of every video like these awesome folks who already support me now